From calorie counts and portion sizes, we wanted to find all the differences between McDonald's in the US and China. This is Food Wars. New season USA versus China. I'm so excited for you guys to see this and to meet our new co-host Tianren. USA versus China. Let's go. Drinks from McDonald's in China come in three sizes, small, medium, and big. But for some reason, the medium is 444 milliliters, which in Chinese basically just means die, 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 which is super unlucky. So I guess they really want you to either get the large or the small. The drinks at the US McDonald's come in four sizes. The extra small, where'd it go? Sorry, they forgot it. The small, the medium, and the large. Our large is 80.9% bigger than China's largest soda. Let's see if that's true. Bound to be a little bit in the lid. That is blasphemous. Shame these people. Shame this clown. Some of you over the past several years has said something to the tune of, it doesn't count or it's wrong because we add the ice or we keep the ice in there and that isn't a true measurement, which I don't believe, but fine. For the first time ever, I wanna measure this without the ice. So I'm solving this once and for all. So right away, you get even less soda. Let's get this up to exactly 32 fluid ounces. 32 ounces of Coca-Cola in the supposed 32 ounce McDonald's cup. I'm so sick of this. Why are they saying 32 fluid ounces? Look, just say 30 or, or 31, it's fine. Your move, McDonald's. Our fries come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. American fries come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. We will now weigh our largest fry. So what about McNuggets? Here in China, you can only get them as an order of five or 10, which is really just two portions of five. That's cute, China, real cute. Here in the US, we have way many more nugget options. Four piece for your infant, six piece, 10 piece, 20 piece, and our largest, the 40 piece. All the math heads watching will be quick to point out that this is 300% of China's largest portion. So here are all the McDonald's menu items from China that you won't find in the US. Here are all the McDonald's items in the US you won't find in China. Oh my God, I've been staring at this for so long. This is incredible. Check out the back. It's an origami apple. This is the best. And see what we got. A hamburger, mini fries, a drink, a corn cup. <gasps> da, da, da. Pong. Oh my God, this is way better than the hamburger. What? Do I have to build pond as well? This is, I'm too old for this. Anyway, if you don't want a hamburger, you can also change this out for a fish fillet or for four pieces of nuggets. You can also get the corn cup changed out for apple slices, but they will cost you one quite extra. And with the juice, you can have either apple juice, milk, or water. So only healthy options here in China's McDonald's. Okay, now on for the toy. So this is gonna take a while, give me a second. Um. And then something flips out from behind his groin. In here, it's coming together. Oh, it's a basketball hoop. Oh my God, this is ingenuity at its best. Look, we can play hoops with this. Three, two, one. I noticed that his Happy Meal, even the box was a toy. In America, our Happy Meal box is another opportunity for an advertisement. All new season of The Masked Singer on Fox. Check it out. Jesus, this is shameless. <laughs> These kids. Remember before, the extra small fry? Found it. More nuggets, a four piece, apple slices. Our toy is decidedly not a puzzle. Remember when Kermit the Frog was in there? That was weird. Okay, what is this? Who, what celebrity was the fox? Oh, it's Wayne Brady. Okay, I've heard of him. Look, is his head in here? Oddly enough, shows the stark difference between China and the US. Theirs has this puzzle to put together. Ours is an ad for a TV show. <laughs> okay, so these are our exclusive beef burgers. Here in China, people mostly eat pork, 
So I think with the beef, they've really had to go the premium route. So you've got some interesting combinations. This is the German sausage double beef burger, but in Chinese, the name is kind of like the anti-vegetarian tyrant. <laughs> so they've got some pretty aggressive marketing for this. Imagine Terry Crews just pulsing his pecs while eating. What is that? Oh, if this is what they call a German sausage, then I think the Germans will be very angry. Here, we've got a BLT double beef burger. <laughs> I'm so sad. What is this? This is like a BLT sandwich that's been sat at the bottom of your bag for a week. I'm excited about these though. These are the Angus Max Thick Beef Burgers. Now, McDonald's have done premium collaborations with Michelin starred chefs in the past, and they even have these really super fancy packaging. Look at that. Double cheeseburger. Ooh. Wow. Look at that. A meat patty thicker than my thumb. That's a proper burger. Mm. It was very meaty. Incredibly cheesy. This is the double cheeseburger, so I can understand that. For the vast majority of Chinese people, their understanding or access to Western food may really come from fast food restaurants. So this is probably the gourmet burger experience for the vast majority of the Chinese population. In the US, you can get a quarter pounder with cheese. What the heck? They give us two, two taps? This is the special two top quarter pounder with cheese, apparently. And we also have a double quarter pounder if you want to increase the meat. Someone wants to get their daily vegetables. Here is the quarter pounder with cheese deluxe. Swimming in mayonnaise. We something in the United States called the McDouble. If you want slightly less cheese on a double cheeseburger, we got you covered. Quarter pounder with bacon. Every once in a while, they just take a quarter pounder and put bacon on it. And I don't know, they really repackage it for a celebrity. And these are our exclusive chicken and fish options. So I want to start you off with this, which has since become McDonald's best spicy burger. This is the McSpicy Chicken Filet. Apparently, it's 1000 SHU, which is a Scoville unit. And it's roughly equivalent to the spiciness you get from a spicy and numbing hot pot. And those guys are pretty spicy. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. You don't feel the burn at first. And then it's like your tongue slowly starts to wake up and it's like a frog in a pot, it slowly starts to realize it's being boiled alive. And by the end of this burger, you're gonna want that Coke. Now this is McDonald's best-selling non-spicy burger, the grilled chicken sandwich, which is supposedly has no growth hormones in their chicken feed. Very heavy on the black pepper. Oh, ooh, wow. I'm very excited about this. This is the McCrunch chicken filet burger. And in Chinese, the name is Ka Zi Cui. It sounds like how it's supposed to take. Ka is kind of like crunchy, and zi is kind of like the juice kind of squirting out. So this should be both crunchy and juicy. Ooh, that looks like a much better piece of chicken. Yes, yes. I didn't get the ka, probably because this has gone a bit cold, but look at that. It is juicy in there. Okay, this is the super spicy chicken filet. Look at this guy. You know this is gonna be super spicy, it's orange. It's not that spicy. <laughs> oh, it's not that sp oh. oh my God. Very tasty, finish that. And it's um, to the hospital you'll go. Woo. And last, but in my opinion, least, the double fish burger. Chicken sandwiches. There's something that is new-ish. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy. Hmm. It's just okay. There's also a Bacon Ranch Deluxe McCrispy. Deluxe equals more vegetables. The McCrispy is something that we ordered and they forgot. And then now, piling on the vegetables, you got the McCrispy Deluxe. Spicy McCrispy. So this rebrand, the crispy chicken sandwich would be the McCrispy. Oh, spicy McCrispy. This isn't that spicy at all. You can also get this in the lock. <laughs> Imagine with all the stuff on it. So McDonald's China has one roll option, which is this crispy pork and pickled bamboo shoot wrap. Mm. That's tasty, it's nice and crunchy, very spicy. <laughs> wow. Mmm. It's spicy, it's sour. Anything that has citron pepper horn in it, 
it's just incredible. Here we've got the McSpicy wings, which come in portions of two, four, or nine. Straight up, I wish we had those wings. Those wings look really good. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but the decoration here on the packet, this is a collaboration with a streetwear brand called Clot, or C-L-O-T, and uh, it uses traditional Chinese aesthetics. So here you've got the lucky knot, which is sort of like a symbol for good luck and longevity, as Chinese as it gets. And this is also the same flavor as the McSpicy Burger. I don't know if there's an accurate translation for this. This is literally called such a big chicken chop. <laughs> it's about the same size as my palm, a little bit bigger. The McCrispy chicken. Mm. Crispy. Wow. Mm. Yes. This is very special. We didn't think we'd be able to get this today. This is the spicy lobster flavored chicken tenders. The Chinese says yao yao, which means you have to shake it. Oh, let's try these babies. There was no need to shake it at all. There's there's no seasoning there at all. It's just literally, it's, it's, it's just literally chicken tenders. It's more of a, an aspiration towards lobster though. And we've got crinkle cut fries. Oh, how I've missed you. Mm. Nothing beats a crinkle cut fry. In China, we have a bunch of different barrel options. For example, this one is the Golden Arches Bucket, which actually didn't come in a bucket. They just put everything into a box. The name actually is the reason why we got this because McDonald's in China has officially renamed to Jinggongmen, which literally translates as Golden Arches. And when they did that, they caught a lot of flack. Everybody started laughing at them. Nobody calls them the Golden Arches in Chinese. It's, it's just McDonald's. But legally, they are now known as the Golden Arches. Featuring sauces, you know what that means, Julie? Sauce talk. Here are all of our exclusive sauces. Garlic chili. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Oh, and no Sichuan sauce either. That's an American invention, just like General Tso's chicken. But here in China, you don't really get sauces unless you ask for them. They come with the nuggets. Chinese people expect food to be complete when it arrives at your table. You don't go and add more sauce to it. Sauces in the United States. Ask them all for dipping. Tangy barbecue. Spicy buffalo. It's the USA scene. Yeah, we got that ranch. Honey mustard. Honey, which is not here, I don't know where it is. Mayonnaise, which also they did not include. Mexican style salsa. These are our exclusive desserts. I am gonna try every single one of them. We can start with the taro pie. Taro is kind of <laughs> like a cross between sweet potato and potato. It's often used in desserts in Asia. You'll find them in everything from pies to bubble tea. It's a bit like yam with a bit of jam, but it's subtly sweet. For Chinese people, if you say a dessert is not very sweet, that's actually a compliment. Pineapple pie, also one of my favorites. Mm. That is hazardly. I think I'm gonna finish this. I don't want to chew for a very long time. So here we've got the strawberry sundae, which is kind of melted already, but I'm sure it would have been amazing when it first arrived. An affogato and a matcha flavored affogato. And then here we've got the McFlurries. This is the strawberry McFlurry with Oreo cookies. Oh my gosh. That is perhaps the most sinful thing that you could have. Oh, but it's so good. This is just regular McFlurry. And here is my all time favorite mango pomelo sago flavored McFlurry. Hmm. It's very different with the ice cream. You still got the, uh, the mango in there and the pomelo. It's very juicy, it's tender, like little tiny pips in there. They kind of pop when you eat them. Oh, just perfect. Mm, very fresh. In the US, you can get yourself a McFlurry with mini M&Ms. For some reason, mini M&Ms taste better than regular M&Ms. I love mini M&Ms. Mm. Hot caramel sundae. It's classic. Never got this in China. God, I mean, what's more American than an apple pie? Look at this thing. Let's crack that bad boy open. We got chocolate chip cookies, shakes. You get three different types of shakes here at a U.S. McDonald's. Chocolate, classic chocolate. Strawberry, personal favorite. 
That's so good. Vanilla, the classic. Our exclusive drinks include the Fuse Iced Tea. We've got the Minute Made Orange McFloat, Bubble Tea, Soy Milk, Pure Milk, Ceylon Black Tea, which in China we would call Red Tea, which just confuses you for fun. I'm gonna go back to here, because this is the only thing I want to try out of all of them. It tastes like orange juice. It's just plain old orange juice. In the US, you get yourself a Dr. Pepper, a Fanta orange, and an orange lava burst lemonade. You also get frozen drinks, get a frozen Fanta blue raspberry, or frozen Coke. McDonald's also has smoothies, a mango pineapple smoothie, and a strawberry smoothie. Yeah, they make, a, they make a decent smoothie, McDonald's. As you can see, we have an absolute ton of breakfast options here in China. I think McDonald's has done fantastic in this regard because the Chinese treat breakfast as a very special meal. We have a very similar saying to eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. So starting with the sausage McMuffin with egg, always a good way to start the day. You can get this as a double as well. Next, we have the ham muffin. It's just literally a piece of ham, some lettuce and two muffins. So I guess this would actually be a hamburger. You can get this as a double as well. Next, we have the grilled chicken muffin. <laughs> this chicken's been sitting around for a while. Next, we've got the, the crispy chicken McMuffin. So this is the breakfast version of the such a big chicken chop. Breakfast in the US. We have so many breakfast options. Starting down here, the sandwiches. Egg McMuffin, I and mean, maybe the first fast breakfast sandwich to ever hit the market. Sausage McMuffin. Sausage and cheese, if you had noticed, this is all uh, what we call an English muffin, because they're from England. There's also a bacon, egg, and cheese McMuffin. But the option that we have most for are the scrambled egg burgers. Scrambled egg grilled chicken burger. The scrambled egg is very luminously yellow. Wow, look at that. Very peppery. They love their pepper here, don't they? So scrambled egg sausage burger. You'll notice the buns are different now. We're no longer on the muffins. We're back to regular buns. Oh, it's squeezing out, isn't it? Scrambled egg cheese burger. This is like the brightest burger I've ever seen in my life. It's definitely very portable. I think that's one thing that McDonald's has done very well because Chinese breakfast traditionally is it's not too portable in the sense that you need to sit down to a lot of meals. Like if you want to eat um, wonton in the morning or if you want to eat some soups in the morning, this you can just take and go. And of course you can get the scrambled egg German flavor sausage burger. Well, at least they give you two as opposed to just one tiny sausage. Biscuits, biscuits, biscuits. Sausage and egg biscuit. So the biscuits are the same breakfast sandwiches you get in English muffin form, but in this biscuit form, the American biscuit, this dry, crumbly, buttery biscuits, there is a bacon, egg, and cheese one. For some reason, people in this country seem to want just a biscuit and sausage with no sauce, no nothing. This is as dry as if you'd go into like a barber shop and take a handful of hair clippings and just shove them in your mouth. This is that dry. In the US, we have something called McGriddles. And McGriddles are breakfast sandwiches where they replace the English muffin and or biscuit with pancakes. So first of all, they got the McDonald's logo right there, too hilarious. Somehow, through the miracle of science, was able to inject syrup into these pancakes. Sensational. You can get your McGriddles in sausage, egg, and cheese, and then just sausage. On to what I was going to talk about, the congee. Congee is a very traditional breakfast item here in China. It's basically just rice porridge, and it's something that is kind of like chicken soup for Chinese people in the sense that if you fall ill, you're going to be given one of these plain with nothing. This, I think, is with century egg. But the century egg, it tastes a little bit like a blue cheese version of egg in, in that it's kind of like egg that's gone off but in a very nice way. And this adds a nice savoriness to the congee. You can also get it with pickles and bamboo shoots. And if you're gonna get congee, then usually you need to pair it with what they call an, an Asian dough stick. This is what we call a yu tiao, which is literally a stick of fried dough. These are absolutely amazing when paired with stuff 
like soy milk and of course with congee. No, you need to eat these fresh, deep fried. They are so incredibly crispy. Oh, wow, well done McDonald's. Like 10 hours later, these are still crispy. <laughs> I'm very impressed. But also a little bit worried because they should never be this crispy after that long. I wonder what they've put in here. Last but not least, our German sausages again. It's not just sandwiches, you guys. We also have something in the US, the big breakfast, which is totally in disarray. This is, this is like the advertisement for this breakfast. I'm sorry? The big breakfast with pancakes. You just get hotcakes, AKA pancakes. There's no way they're back there like ladling the, uh, right? There's no way they're doing that. These have to be pre-made and they just heat them up, right? So hotcakes and sausage. Oh, and they both come with syrup. So, you know, what we gotta do. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. We also have a morning wrap with ham. The, uh, the wrap itself is, is basically frozen solid. We can exchange that with sausage, which is also frozen. It's almost like a piece of art now. Like you're supposed to look at it instead of eating it. Wow, frozen in time. US McDonald's have sausage breakfast burritos. I mean, I can't even unfold. I'm just like ripping it apart. You got the scrambled eggs, the sausage. It comes with Mexican style salsa. And McDonald's is actually pretty good considering that this is like probably the furthest you can get from something, from salsa and still legally be called salsa. If you're not trying to completely destroy your insides first thing in the morning, you can get yourself fruit and maple oatmeal. Seems like your breakfast is trying to escape your body an hour later. <laughs> Might actually be able to hold this down. Et voila, the options from Le Bécari. So we have macarons. Right now we have two different flavors, chocolate and Berries. These actually look really legit. Pat yourself on the back. This is really good. And these things are lamingtons. I've never actually had lamingtons. Apparently they're basically Australian sponge cakes, which are covered in coconut flakes. And this is a lemon flavored one. Surprisingly addictive. Uh, we have the McCafe Bakery. At the McCafe Bakery, you get, you know, sweet treats, not necessarily for breakfast, but probably leaning more towards breakfast time. Ba-bam, blueberry muffin, a cinnamon roll with cream cheese frosting. It looks like a squishy. It most certainly is not. And come on, who doesn't love an apple fritter? An apple fritter is a donut that tastes like apple and it's shaped like it was just squoze in someone's hand for some strange reason. These are our McCafe drink options starting with the extra milky latte with oat milk. <laughs> a latte is two thirds milk. And then you add oat milk in there. I don't think we're gonna have much coffee. Oh, oh wow, that is surprisingly good. In China, oat milk has really, really taken off because a lot of people did not grow up drinking milk. A lot of Chinese people are lactose intolerant. And so oat milk is definitely a, a very healthy alternative. And that's why we have the extra strong chocolate with oat milk. You can also get this without oat milk. Extra strong matcha milk. Extra strong matcha, oh, we have so much matcha. Extra strong chocolate smoothie. Extra strong milk and vanilla smoothie. And the matcha milk with matcha jelly. Matcha, matcha, oh, I wanna have. We absolutely love matcha here in China. I don't know why. It tastes like grass and frozen grass. Coffees and coffees and coffees and coffees. McDonald's has a assortment of feature drinks, espresso drinks, mochas, iced lattes. Let's get all that on the screen. See, all these things. This is the cold brew. This is so strong. I think each of you should eventually take a sip, but you will not believe how strong the cold brew is. Oh my God. <laughs> French vanilla latte. And this is the exact opposite. This is like so sweet. Mocha. Who doesn't want hot chocolate first thing in the morning? Hilarious people are buying that. Ooh, this is the premium roast coffee. I know I've been kind of dissing on it, but their actual coffee, the actual McDonald's coffee, I think is very good. They're, they're, they're a good contender in the coffee game, I think, in the fast food coffee game. Especially the horrible PR nightmare they had when they like destroyed that lady's crotch with their super hot coffee. It is a comeback story, McDonald's. Almost killing a woman with second degree burns from boiling hot coffee to these nice little fun cafe drinks. I would happily pour this all over my crotch. You can get the um, iced coffee drinks. They're all like this, this is the mocha. McDonald's in China also has a late night menu. 
They only have one item, but this is worth it. I got it last night. These are marinated chicken bones. They don't sound very appealing, but the Chinese name is wordplay on an idiom which kind of means the highest level of artistry. And when I opened up this box, I literally heard angels going, this is actually a street food from some place up in northeast China called Shenyang. Chinese people love fiddly stuff and meat on the bone is just that much more tasty. Ah, uh, still incredible, even cold. You know the box actually says marinated chicken bones. Be careful, it may contain bones. <laughs> and you're actually supposed to spit the bones out, but I'm having so much fun eating this thing. I actually eat the bones too. It's spicy, it's sour, it's sweet, oh, and just absolutely divine. I can see how people would be inspired after eating this. So uh, McDonald's came to China in 1990, and then it opened in Beijing in 92. And back then, that was the largest McDonald's in the world. They had 700 seats. On opening day, they served 40,000 people. And people didn't go there for the food, it was a place to be seen. Like McDonald's was a window to the West. It was a cosmopolitan place to experience capitalism <laughs> in a way. But over time, it became a trendy hangout spot for city kids after school. They go there to do their homework. It still very much is middle class. I remember actually when I came to visit China 20 years ago, uh, my aunts greeted me at the airport with bags of McDonald's and I was actually kind of offended that they would bring junk food to meet me as opposed to real Chinese food. But for them, McDonald's was the best of the best. It was all the prestige. Hey, to me, McDonald's when it comes to fast food is number one in the US, dare I say, the world. If you just want a good hot meal where you know exactly what's gonna taste like and get it and go, McDonald's never fails. Waiting in line, getting it through drive-through, you get it lickety split. Now they're really, they leaned really big into delivery since COVID. And man, the McDonald's is showing up right away and I love it. It's dangerous. Uh, I can't remember the last time I've eaten inside a, a McDonald's. So I usually dine in at McDonald's, but I find that in China, they focus more on delivery and they promise to get everything delivered within 30 minutes which they actually keep to, and that's incredibly impressive. Last night, I ordered the chicken carcass. It took 28 minutes. Got a Big Mac earlier, that was 10 minutes. So they are very, very punctual. They're also open for very long, from 7 till 10 p.m., and there are many 24-hour branches, so extremely convenient. Now, McDonald's is an American brand, so they have American classics on the menu, hamburgers, chicken sandwiches, but they, they kind of assimilated and made popular the burger culture in this country. It's hard to say, because I feel like the American taste is McDonald's. I think McDonald's has actually adapted pretty well to Chinese tastes, besides the McSpicy burger and wings and the grilled chicken sandwich, which have all become bestsellers. McDonald's actually uses chicken thigh meat instead of breast meat in all of its chicken burgers, except for the McChicken. And I think that's because Chinese people think chicken breast is dry and they've also got lots of time-limited specials when it comes to desserts, like the mantel burger, which is kind of like a Chinese bun, and even cilantro sundae. McDonald's, everyone's going out to McDonald's. Burger King's been going out to McDonald's since, what, the 60s. Every burger chain try to get some sort of edge at McDonald's. We're fancier, we're got different varieties of stuff. McDonald's is number one, here now and forever. The McDonald's logo should be on the American flag, damn it. So China is McDonald's second largest market by store count after the US. In China, there are over 5,000 McDonald's locations, but KFC has over 9,000. They actually came here first. So it's KFC, then McDonald's, then a local brand called Dico's, which does both fried chicken and burgers. So they're really just fighting an uphill battle. In China, a Big Mac costs 25 yuan. A Big Mac in the US costs $5.29. Make it a Big Mac meal with a medium fries and medium Coke, and it's 36 yuan. If you wanna go large, that's four yuan extra for a grand total of 40 yuan. If you make it a meal with a medium fries and medium drink, price goes up to $9.29. Upgrade that to a large, and it's $10.79. Our Big Mac large meal costs 86% more. 
So our Big Mac meal is cheaper, but at the same time, the average daily wage of a cabbie in Beijing is about 200 yuan, give or take. And so this would be 20% of their salary. So it's still not really something that you would eat on a regular basis, but maybe splurge on. Let's talk nutrition. This is that very Big Mac again in the US. It's 590 calories and all this stuff. In China, our Big Mac has 524 calories, 26 grams of fat, 45 grams of carbs, 27 grams of protein, and 877 milligrams of sodium. What if we did a combo? Starting with the medium fries. This adds 320 calories to the meal and all this stuff. While a medium fries in China contains 290 calories, 13 grams of total fat, 35.9 grams of carbs, we're not sure if it contains any sugars, four grams of protein and 252 milligrams of sodium. But you need some to drink, add in a medium Coke to that, and this kicks your meal up another 210 calories. We'll do the same. Here's everything in a medium Coke in China. 148 calories. That leaves the grand total for the China meal at 962 calories. While in the US, the total ends up looking like this, 1,120 calories and all this other stuff. Get a load of that sodium though. No. From calorie counts to portion sizes, we wanted to find all the differences between Domino's in China and in the US. This is Food Wars. Here in China, Domino's comes in three sizes. The seven inch small, which is only available for two pizzas, the fruit deluxe and the cocoa brownie, hand tossed only, the nine inch regular and the 12 inch large. In the US, our Domino's pizzas come in four sizes, small, 10 inch, medium, 12 inch, large, 14 inch, and the XL, 16 inches. No, there's nothing on your screen. The pizza is in fact that greasy. We have three types of crust, pan crust, hand tossed, and the thin crust. And eight different crust options, including stuffed crusts, which are only available outside of the US. The UK has them, we have them. Sweet potato stuffed crust. You see that? The orangey bit in there. <laughs> that was pretty good actually. It reminds me a little bit of a mooncake in that it's sweet and savory. <laughs> Stuffed sausage crust. <laughs> Just a little sausage peeking out the hole. Boletus crust. And basically it's a mushroom. It's a variety of mushroom of which there are many different species. They're actually poisonous. So you need to cook them properly. If they're undercooked, they will cause hallucinations. Uh, the mushroom seller I met, her husband actually was poisoned four times. And once he saw a bunch of skulls either side of him, once he saw a mountain of gold, one other time he just beats up a fridge and the last time he slept for three days. It just tastes like wet mushroom. Actually, uh, we do have mushrooms that make you hallucinate in the US as well, although you can't get them at Domino's. Salted egg yolk stuffed crust. It's recommended that this is paired with the chicken pizza. So you basically have the whole family in there. <laughs> that is delicious. It tastes like a million calories. Such a guilty pleasure. <laughs> the meat floss stuffed crust. It's not the most appetizing name, is it? It looks a little bit like lint but it tastes like bacon cotton candy. Usually it's made of pork, but you can also get it as uh, beef or chicken or fish. I don't think it quite works in crust when crust is already so dry. We also have something called the double decker thin and the double decker thick. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is actually the double decadence from the UK. I mean, it, it is pretty much a pizza sandwich. US Domino's, we have five different dough varieties. A better way of saying that is five different crust options. Dough varieties, yeah, same thing. Anyway, first one down here is a gluten-free crust. And I want to note it only comes in the small because from Domino's perspective, if you want gluten-free pizza, you're eating it by yourself. Next is the hand toss, the kind of the classic style, right? Everyone's seen the hand toss to me. It's the default setting. 
After that, this is the crunchy thin. Cut into squares, there's a tavern cut for all you in the Midwest. Another crust dough variety is the pan. This is the thick boy, only comes in a medium. And of course, the last one is the Brooklyn style, which you only get in the large or the extra large. And it's thin and also has these really big slices. I can't tell that's eight slices, right? No, six slices, right? So it should be eight. I don't know, can someone in post increase the contrast on that to, to maybe make the lines a little more obvious? Our Domino's largest pizza has a diameter of 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters and an area of 730.6 centimeters squared and costs 88 yuan or 12.81 USD. Breaking that down, our pizza is 0.11 yuan per square centimeter. Take our large 14 inch or 35.56 centimeter pizza with an area of 993.1 square centimeters. That's 0 0.015 cents per square centimeter or 0 0.096 yuan. That means our US Domino's pizza per square inch is roughly 12.5% cheaper than in China. Our Domino's categorizes their pizzas into three groups indulgent, classic, and value. Let's take a look at the indulgent first. French style liver mousse ham pizza. I'm not even sure what a liver mousse is. I assume it's meant to be foie gras. It smells like foie gras. Oh, but it is weird with pizza, man. No, that should not be eaten with pizza. That is super weird. Why? Hmm, no. Let's grab some New Zealand lamb. It may be New Zealand lamb, but they've used a lot of cumin and basically turned it into a lamb skewer. Definitely miles better. After that, the Sultan Durian pizza. That is a really healthy, big piece of durian. Abalone and scallop indulgent pizza. <laughs> I mean, just why? Abalone is super expensive, and it's popular in China because its name sounds like to get explosively rich. So you'll often find it served at weddings, at Chinese New Year. Oh, let's clean our palate. We'll get some Australian, New Zealand Wagyu beef. I'd eat the beef by itself. I'd remove everything else. Crayfish and chicken. I think they've gone full Nola here because the chicken are meant to be all lean chicken. And then we got damn crawdaddies too. Chicken and crawdads. I love New Orleans food. So yeah, I would definitely try that pizza. South American ribeye steak. The burdock prawn bacon indulgent pizza. We've got peas, we've got prawns, we've got some cherry tomatoes. This is the Japanese style eel pizza. And on the description, it actually says, may contain soft bones, eat with care. Oh, they're very tasty though. Here we have the Australian slash South American grain fed diced beef. So they either weren't sure where the beef was sourced from, or if they run out of beef from Australia, they go to South America. And over here, we have a pineapple shrimp pizza. You know, for those of you who hate Hawaiian pizzas, this must be so much more triggering. Nah, I think it's actually worse than a Hawaiian. Also in the indulgent lineup is our regular durian pizza. This is actually a bestseller. It costs nine yuan less than the Sultan. Oh yeah, no, that's great. Mmm. oh, that's delicious. Here we have the Okonomiyaki Surf and Turf. Look at that, that's actually pretty decent. It's even got the hurikake intact. Look at that, these little super thin flakes. Hmm, that's decent. Well done, yeah, that's pretty good. Very meaty too. Bacon meat floss potato pizza. <laughs> and it is absolutely blanketed in meat floss and a gigantic potato wedge. It's a little bit like the Hawaiian pizza, except instead of a juicy pineapple, you have sweet bacon flavored cotton candy. Mm. Not sure if like. The Domino's US menu obviously is not as robust as China's Domino's menu, but there are some specialty pizzas you can get here, you can't get there, including these. First one here is the Extravagan, two capital Z's, ah. 
This looks like a rebranding of what would be called a Supreme Pizza here, right? Now, if you hate vegetables, don't worry. You can get the same pizza, but just pizza version. We got sausage, ham, pepperoni, possibly hamburger. This could have been just a sausage and pepperoni pizza and it probably would have tasted the same. I'm just saying. Philly cheesesteak, Philadelphia, let us know in the comments how insulted you are that the sandwich that bears your name is now in pizza form and this thing looks terrifying. Steak, cheese, like that, onion and uh, green pepper. Oh, and mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I don't know if I want a whole thing of this, though. I already just one bite. I'm like, yeah, I got it. It's more the novelty of, yeah, I guess it does taste like a Philly cheesesteak, but also I gotta give this whole pizza. Hmm. A Cali chicken bacon ranch, which I'm gonna go ahead and assume is, what do you think? Chicken, bacon, some sort of ranch. I don't know what makes it California. Yeah, not, not bad. Buffalo chicken. In China, they had all these really interesting flavor combinations that I'm sure someone was just, you know, really trying to capture the breath of Chinese tastes. Here, everything is like, this exists somewhere else. We just did a pizza form. Case in point, buffalo chicken. Hey, do you like wings? Yeah. Do you want it in pizza form? No? Too bad. Buffalo chicken. Uh, another one here, spinach and feta. No. Because I was bitten to a thing of um, cheese. No. Another specialty pizza we have exclusive to US and not in China is the Wisconsin six cheese, which assuming from the name has I'm gonna go ahead and guess six cheeses. And they said Wisconsin on there because Wisconsin is the cheese state. Shout out to Wisconsin. On to our classic offerings, beginning with the salted egg yolk flavored chicken, which as you can see was very welcomed by the crew. We were already missing two pieces. The Chinese name for this is Golden Sands, which is a specific way of cooking the salted egg yolk so that it becomes a sort of frothy paste that can be used to coat various things. It's uh, a salty, sweet umaminess. Teriyaki beef potato pizza. Teriyaki beef, yes. The pizza itself is already quite starchy. It's all carbs and then a potato on top of that. It's a staple on a staple. Most of these pizzas are sweet. Peking duck pizza. <laughs> I'm very conflicted about this. I like that they're representing us, but this looks very blasphemous to me. That actually sounds amazing. Nope, 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 nope. Blasphemous, nope. Okay, never mind. I'd still try it though. Here we've got the tuna seafood deluxe. Not that big a fan of seafood pizza myself. Truffle flavored sauce mushroom and chicken pizza. Two types of mushrooms in that pizza, but note that the truffle is a flavored sauce. So that's not included as one of the types of mushrooms. Ah, no. Normal pizza, yes, chorizo pizza. I don't know why there's peas on all of the pizza, but look, I'm gonna take it for just regular meat toppings. Yes, chorizo, get in here. Tastes like bolognese sauce. But it's okay. I can dig it, especially after all this stuff, I'll take anything. And now our value options, beginning with the Texas barbecue. Now the description says it has Texas style meat. I assume it's ham. Again, it's sweet. But here, since it's a barbecue sauce, maybe a honey glaze, I'm okay with that. The lychee chicken pizza. Don't know why it's paired up like that. This is actually a pretty memorific pizza. The name is very punny and it references a middle-aged Chinese influencer who screams at the top of his lungs, Oi, yay! Which kind of just translates to, come on. Many times people have said that I kind of look like that guy and it's just, I don't know what to talking about. There's no resemblance whatsoever. Oli gay! All I taste is a lychee. The potato bacon pizza. This is one of Domino's all time best sellers. And the name in Chinese actually says American style. I don't know, is this what you guys eat over <laughs> in yonder? Nope. Here we go, here's a taste of America. Mm -hmm. Land of the free. Who am I to judge? I don't know what kind of potato wedges Americans like to put on their pizza. Korean style fried chicken. Also with 
sesame seeds, seaweed, marinara sauce, and what looks like onions. Hey, that's a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Veggie Deluxe, not touching it. Over here, we have something special. These are our two smallest pizzas, the seven inches. This is the Fruit Deluxe. Peach, blueberry jam, pineapple, coconut gel. You know what's best? It's actually meant to be sweet. If I've tried one dessert pizza, I'm gonna try the other one. The cocoa flavored brownie pizza with brownie cubes and cocoa powder. It's actually not so bad. It reminds me a little bit of Nutella on buttered toast. I can dig it. Still here. Man, that's a lot of pizza. We at the US Domino's have sandwiches, specifically these seven. Most of them are just versions of pizza that are also in sandwich form. First one would be the buffalo chicken. Let's get a look in there. The chicken cheese and the sauce, the chicken habanero. I like a habanero thing because it has the sweet and the spicy. Pineapple and jalapenos together in one bite. This one, bleh. Mediterranean veggie, feta cheese and spinach. So that's in the Mediterranean area, I guess. Banana peppers, which I don't think exist outside of the US. Oh, the Philly cheesesteak. Oh. It's, it's like double depressing because this, I mean, the Philly cheesesteak is a sandwich. It has a specific way of being made. This is like not what a Philly cheesesteak is supposed to look like. Why do this, right? Over here, we got the chicken bacon ranch. Bro, they were generous with the ranch. Look at that. Lots of bacon and chicken and the cheese. Nice. An Italian sandwich. Mamma mia. Salami, cheese, ham, and another salami. And of course, what is more Italian than banana peppers? <laughs> and the chicken parm sandwich. Chicken parmesan, which is, again, an incredibly popular, already well-established sandwich that Domino's, for some reason, felt they needed to deconstruct and then reconstruct in a different way. I don't want any of these. No sandwiches here in China, but what we do have is ribeye steak. Wait up! Oh, whoa, that's a big piece of steak. Mm. Let's talk pasta and rice. We have both. Here are our pasta options. All come with spaghetti, or you can pay one extra yuan to upgrade to penne. Spag bowl, looks decent, smells good. A lot of bolognese on the pasta. Spaghetti basil. I'm pretty sure that's just a carbonara. Here we've got a seafood pasta with scallop and squid roe. Here we've got the rice options, chorizo baked rice. You've got some chorizo, you've got some pepperoni, truffle flavored baked rice with chicken and bacon. Not gonna touch that, don't like my truffles. And just a nice wholesome curry beef rice. Curry sauce, beef, rice. What could go wrong? No rice dishes in the US, but we do have our own pastas. Four specifically. This is the fourth Domino's Food Wars that I have been a part of. I want to again state that I think the pastas at Domino's are an absolute abomination. So if you're watching from outside the US and you think this looks weird, you are correct. This pasta is so weird. Italian sausage marinara. I mean, I can't even break through the skin of this thing. Come on, man. Chicken carbonara. Ugh. Oh, it hurts my soul. Oh, pasta primavera. Whatever primavera means, it ain't this. And last, chicken Alfredo. Ugh. Both countries have wings. In China, you can only get your wings in orders of four, unless you go for the wings combo. Now here we have four exclusive flavors. Cantonese roast, sweet in like a fruity sort of sweetness, and you've got that barbecue smell. It tastes like Chinatown. <laughs> Next, we have the Orleans flavor. Oh, it's very spicy, wow. Oh, oh my gosh. 
We also have the honey and the barbecue flavored wings. And I believe in the US, you just have them combined as a honey barbecue. But here we get an extra flavor out of it. I'm sure some of you might have noticed our wings look a little bit different. A wing is made up of three parts. The drum, the flat, and the tip. Usually it's removed because it doesn't have much meat. But here in China, we love fiddly food. Basically here in China, we love the tip so much that we even have an entire dish devoted to just the tip. <laughs> One thing I do love on the menu though is the Domino's wings. In the US, you can get wing orders in eight, 16, or 32. We only have four exclusive flavors. Starting down here, got the hot, then the honey barbecue, sweet mango habanero, and last, the garlic parmesan. On the presentation, this is, is especially, mm, but they are very good. I mean, I still get pizza over wings, but being at wing sides, Domino's wings, not bad. We also have roast skewers. Now, these are something that are popular street foods. Here, we've got some chicken satay skewers. We've got beef skewers. These also come in the lamb version. Incredibly delicious. And also, <laughs> Yeah. Roast sausages. I think these are usually what kids like to eat. I don't usually see adults eating these. These would be sweet sausages, but they're very filling. China also has seafood options, namely our golden shrimp, which uh, actually look a little bit orange, pollock bites, and regular fish bites. Our other sides include chicken rolls. I believe it's smoked chicken mayo an egg and peas. There's peas. Peas make it into every single menu item here at Domino's. Mini hot dogs wrapped in a very cute blanket. It's almost like it outgrew its blanket. Healthy salad, star-shaped hash browns, onion rings, and potato wedges. And both countries have garlic bread, but ours, we do it a little differently. Ours is stuffed with cheese and other stuff. For instance, this one right here, jalapeno and bacon. Why this over pizza? Another one we have here is the spinach and feta. We have twists, we have bites. Starting over here, we've got the Parmesan bread twists. Looks like it's kind of like doing this. Like, please don't give me diarrhea. Garlic bread twists. Do you want this taking up space in your stomach? I don't, just get more pizza. I mentioned it before, we got dips. What are dips? From what I can tell, just big portions of something to dip these breads in. First one is, oh my good Lord. Gonna go ahead and assume this is the five cheese. Look at that, Yuli, look at the oil on this. Ugh. You know what it tastes like? Like pizza, but without the sauce. And not to be outdone, looks like the cheese one, but this one, you guessed it has marinara sauce. So if you got sick of having bread with the sauce and cheese on it, you can just get the sauce and cheese baked and then the bread baked separately and just dip them. Who wants this instead of pizza? I don't understand, but all right. We have square garlic bread and garlic bread. I actually don't know what the difference is beside the shape, but they both come with this honey mayo dip I actually thought this was mustard. I think it's mustard, mayo, and honey. I think the bread is just an excuse to eat this dip because this is actually pretty good. We also have soups. You can get a nice bowl of pumpkin cream bacon, classic borscht, or cream of mushroom soup. Desserts. Unfortunately, both China and the US have lava cakes, so it is not exclusive. But we have a couple things that you can't get in China, specifically these cinnamon bread twists and the Domino's marble cookie brownie. Come on, who doesn't like brownies? And you can tell they put a little cookie dough in there. It's a cookie brownie hybrid. And we got this icing that you would dip in here and I'm not gonna do it. I've, I've decided I'm taking a stand against all twisted bread. Not happening, sorry. Here in China, our exclusive dessert options are limited to durian pie. I believe this is durian. I had a sniff. It's durian. <laughs> you can always tell if something is durian. Just put your nose to it. Pineapple pie. 
And we have one of two Portuguese egg tarts. Drinks in the US, you can get Sprite, Fanta Orange, Dasani Water, and Dr. Pep. This is Emblick leaf flour and coconut jelly. I had to do quite a bit of research to figure out what an emblick is. Apparently it's some kind of fruit that actually has a lot to do with Buddhism, but it has great cooling and cough relieving properties. So this is perfect for summer when it's too hot outside. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of nice, but it also kind of tastes like I'm drinking green perfume, if that makes sense. It's very, very floral. This is coconut and musk melon. Mm. Oh, that's tasty. It's a little bit too rich. So nay to that. And this, <laughs> this is carambola and olive. It's such a weird combination, right? So a carambola is this thing. It's a star fruit, but I've never had it as a drink. And together with Chinese olive. Okay. Learn something new every day. Ugh. Oh, that was a pleasant surprise. There was actually some coconut jelly at the bottom too. That was very inviting. We also just have a regular mango and passion fruit drink. Oh, and bottled water. Domino's entered China in 1997, but for about two decades, they pretty much just floundered and nobody really took notice of them. It's only really in recent years that they've become very youthful with all sorts of wacky flavors as you've seen. And because it's not as common as McDonald's or KFC in China, a Domino's opening in, for example, a tier two, tier three city is big news to locals. And a lot of people actually post about it on social media. Oh, look, a Domino's has come to our town. It's something to be proud of. Domino's in the US, I feel like it's been Domino's versus Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut versus Domino's since I think the 80s. Yes, there's other nationwide pizza chains. Papa John's sucked up a lot of the attention online for a while. There's a little Caesar's, there's a bunch of other ones, but it really is Domino's and pizza have been neck and neck. I mean, they're kind of interchangeable. Now people watching are gonna be like, no, one's better than the other. Honestly, I don't think I could taste the difference if you put them side by side, but with Domino's, as far as the reputation, you always know you're gonna get a good pizza, a hot pizza, it's gonna be decently priced, which is nice. Here in China, Domino's main rivals are, of course, Pizza Hut, who dominates the market with a 35% market share. Next in line is a local brand called Champion Pizza with 5.6% of the market share. And third comes Domino's at 5.3% of the market share. Like in the States, Domino's China has a guarantee to deliver your pizza within 30 minutes, otherwise they will give you all sorts of discounts. This really sets them apart from other pizza players here in China because they use their own proprietary delivery service, whereas most restaurants in China use a third party akin to something like Uber Eats. It's also something that's become a bit of a double-edged sword because people are actively trying to game their 30 minute delivery window by switching off corridor lights, removing door numbers, and just generally trying to get their delivery drivers lost. And about half of all of Domino's salary payments go towards their delivery drivers, which shows you how big of a delivery force they have. So it's actually kind of quite nice. Convenience, I mean, Domino's is probably one of the most convenient uh, pizza chains in the United States. You can get you can get a Domino's pizza, you get it in the app, it's easy to use. The pizza's at your place in probably 30 minutes, depending where you live. Some would say too convenient. The Domino's in China doesn't disclose their nutritional information, but based on third-party independent research, we found that a large hand-tossed pepperoni pizza has 1,466.4 calories, 64 grams of protein, 66.4 grams of fat, 155.2 grams of carbs, and 3,257.6 milligrams of sodium. Our large pepperoni is 370 calories per slice, or 2,960 for the entire pie. Also, 299% of your daily sodium. Oy. 
that's a salty pie. Domino's China's most calorific pizza is this. The large salted egg yolk flavored chicken pizza with stuffed sausage crust. Now, one slice is 230 calories and the full pizza is 1,841 calories. Our Domino's pizza with the most calories is the Cali Chicken Bacon Ranch. An extra large slice is 560 calories and the full pie, 3,360 calories. Two ingredients you won't find in Domino's in China are potassium bromate and ractopamine. Both have been banned for use in China. Potassium bromate is used as a dough conditioner as classified as a category 2B carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. Ractopamine is FDA approved and it promotes muscle mass development, limits fat deposition, and reduces feed consumption. Although it is considered safe for human consumption, China requires all meats sold to be free of the drug and never fed the product to begin with. There is no direct link stating ractopamine is specifically used in the meat at Domino's, but on their stewardship page under animal care, they state, quote, it's important to highlight that Domino's does not own, raise, transport, or process the animals used for our products. Domino's purchases pork, beef, and poultry ingredients from suppliers who obtain their products from farmers and ranchers who raise and care for their animals in compliance with local, state, and federal guidelines, industry best practices, and the support of farm and animal veterinarians. That is a very long legalese way of Domino saying, hey, we don't farm the meat, we buy them from other people, and they're saying they're doing it the right way, so we don't know. From exclusive items to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between KFC in China and the US. This is Food Wars. Here in China, we can get KFC in three portion sizes. One piece, two pieces, and six pieces. In the US, KFC chicken comes in seven portion sizes. These first four are one piece a la carte, two piece with a combo, that's a side, a biscuit, and a drink, three piece also with a combo, and the four piece also with the combo. And of course we have buckets. We have three main core buckets. The snack bucket, which contains five pieces of chicken and six wings. The family bucket, which gets you an extra corn on the cob, some mashed potato and three drinks. And the super family bucket where you get dessert and mashed potato, more of both on top of that as well. And then we have buckets where you can get an eight piece, a 12 piece, or the 16 piece. Now, if we're going strictly on just chicken and not wings, the US's largest is 166 point, repeating 6% bigger than China's largest chicken portion size. Next, we have fries. Now here in China, we get them in three sizes, small, medium, and large. We got two fry sizes in the US, the individual and the large. Let's weigh the large fries in both countries. <laughs> I never grow tired of that. Here in China, our drinks come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. American drinks come in the following sizes, regular 20 ounces and large 30 ounces. But that's not all. You can also get a half gallon container Gouge, the Jesus piece of any beverage of your choosing. Damn. Hope you're sharing that, Joe. Here's everything you'll find in a KFC China that you won't find in the US. And we have a lot to get through. Here's everything you'll find in a KFC in the US you won't find in China. One exclusive that we have here in China that you cannot find in the US are Wings. That's right. It's tough times for the U.S. economy in just about every sector. Earlier this year, KFC laid off several favorite menu items, including wings, Nashville hot sauce to anything, strawberry lemonade, chocolate chip cookies, and pretty much popcorn chicken. They still exist in the famous bowls, but not on their own. Ah, we still got them here. And they're available in two styles, the crispy spicy wings and the New Orleans grilled wings. They might be wondering, what are New Orleans wings? Uh, apparently, KFC might have invented the flavor 
and it's kind of like how General Tso's chicken is not actually from China. New Orleans chicken is kind of just a misnomer. It's a honey-baked spicy wing with a, I think, a Cajun mix. U.S. chicken styles. One chicken style you can get here in the U.S. you can't get in China is this, the extra crispy. It's exactly what it sounds. They fry it like twice or with more breading, I don't know. But it gives that extra crispy crunch. Volume up. In some parts of the country, you can get Kentucky grilled. Grilled chicken, not fried. I mean, fried's in the title, so I don't know what you're doing getting grilled chicken at KFC. And for sandwiches, we have a spicy option. I just wanted to talk a little bit about our chicken recipes here. So this is the original recipe, but we also have an additional recipe called the golden crispy chicken. Now you can tell that there's quite a bit of a difference. It is significantly more golden in that I guess it's lighter yellow colored than the original, but there's also a very healthy sprinkling of chili powder on top and the batter is a lot harder and crunchier. I guess it's probably more of a localized version of the chicken. That looks delicious. That's like extra crispy and spicy. Yeah, I definitely want to try that. Here we have our exclusive burgers and roll. We'll get to that later. First off, I just want to draw your attention to the rattan pepper flavor spa chicken burger. I had a really tough time trying to figure out what spa meant. And I found actually on one advertising poster in fine print that SPA was not an acronym. It just meant that the chicken is juicy and tender because this is made of chicken breast instead of chicken thigh, which you'll remember from another episode is the norm here in China because Chinese people think that chicken thigh is juicy and tender, whereas breast is really dry and it's basically chalky. So I guess the SPA is an attempt to get rid of that stigma by saying, oh, look, it's so soft and tender, like the chickens just come out of a massage or a spa treatment. If you haven't had hot pot or had Sichuan flavors before, this might be a really big turnoff because the taste of the rat and pepper is so strong. The chicken is all right, you know, it's tender. I can't say it's just come out of a spa. The spicy chicken sandwich looks basically the same. Well, for one, it's not spicy. And second, it's actually not as tasty as the uh, the spa chicken. I do actually not. You know what? I take it all back. I do actually feel that the the spa chicken is a little bit more tender. This one does feel drier. The crispy chicken sandwich. It's pretty much the same as everything else. I think they're really just adding different condiments. But the gist of it is always lettuce, the mayo, and chicken. That's it. And the bun, of course. And the new orleans chicken burger of course they're going to put this in a burger as well if they've gone and invented an entire flavor category that's actually not bad and we have one more chicken option the old beijing chicken roll or as listed on their website the dragon twister so they called it old beijing style and i now understand that old beijing means that you're going to chuck some cucumber in there there's probably leek in there as well. There's gonna be tianmian sauce. Let's give the dragon a taste. It just tastes sweet. There is a crunch from the cucumbers, but the cucumbers kind of gone a bit, it's kind of gone a bit sad as well. Now we've got the beef burger options. This is the classic American style beef burger. Imagine this being like the introductory course to American flavors for someone who's never left China. They're going to be sorely disappointed. Oh. You can also get double beef burgers at KFC in your classic American style. Oh, oh, no thank you. Or the smoked pepper flavor. If you want a burger, go to McDonald's, go to Burger King. There's also a fish burger, the deep sea cod burger, which you can get as a double as well. I do have my hopes up for this one. Not very high, mind you, but I do have some hope for this one. This is the Bacon Wagyu Beef Burger. It's a premium burger, as you can tell, because it comes in its own box, which prevents it from becoming squished into sandwiches like these guys. No. 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 
I don't care if it really is Wagyu or not. In fact, it actually tastes a little bit like the consistency of Spam. You can get that as a double or a triple, but I <laughs> just skip it in my opinion. We have one exclusive sandwich to the US. It's this, the Chicken Little, which I guess is a bite-sized chicken sandwich with a little tender in here. Also, um, hey KFC, if they had one note, maybe relax in the mayo on this. Are you kidding me? Look at this. The sauce, whatever this is, like, bro, it is dripping. Uh, pickles, not a fan. Why this over the chicken sandwich? I have no idea. I mean, unless you have like a, a kid or a picky eater, skip these. We've also got other chicken options, beginning with our Hong Kong style crispy big chicken thigh. If you've watched our other episodes, you'll know that Hong Kong style usually is used to denote a sort of a sweet honey roasted flavor profile. Would have been oven baked. Look at this glaze, that's beautiful. Mmm, it's sweet without being cloying. It's savory, it's incredibly meaty. There's also the secret recipe whole chicken. Look at that, an entire chicken. See, it's, it's about the size of my face and I've got a pretty long face. You've done well, you've done well, Colonel. Mm, I forgive you for the burgers. Heck yeah, dude, I totally want one of those, man. Just bite right into that big leg like I'm at medieval times. This here is the hot and spicy chicken with bone. And apparently it's scapula meat, so your collarbone. I've never had collarbone chicken meat, so this is definitely a first for me. It tastes a little bit like a chicken nugget, but with a bone inside. And we've also got popcorn chicken and nuggets. You might be wondering what these are. KFC is trying to squeeze in on the pizza business. This is KFC's K pizza. This is a chicken and mushroom K pizza. Look at that, ultra thin crust. That's actually pretty good. I think I actually like this more than Domino's pizzas. And this one is very special. This is the K pizza da panji flavor. So <laughs> da panji means big plate of chicken. It's a Xinjiang dish, which is usually a chicken stew comes on a giant dish with potatoes and bell peppers. And you also get some hand pulled noodles thrown in. In fact, the origin story of the big plate of chicken supposedly was either invented by a Sichuanese or a Hunanese immigrant who was serving these dishes up to truckers. And uh, they're very hearty, they're super tasty. You always eat them in a group, but I'm just gonna pick out and eat one by myself on a pizza. Mm. KFC, this is legit good. KFC has recently added nuggets back onto the menu, so they're technically not exclusive anymore, but I'll show them off here. You can get them in eight and 12 pieces. Here's the nugget eight pieces. Get in there, Yuli. Nugget vision. Now, remember before when I said they didn't have popcorn chicken anymore? I mean, this is pretty, right? It's a little bit bigger than popcorn chicken. When I said nuggets, you were probably thinking what I was thinking, like McNuggets, right? Like nuggets. So this being a nugget is very strange. Really good though. We also have chicken tenders. Uh, they come in orders of eight, 12, and 16. The crispiness on this, I have to. Mm. Now to complement your chicken, we have a plethora of sauces and condiments to offer, namely sweet vinegar and sweet chili, which we couldn't find today, and the Sichuan pepper spicy chili powder. You can't eat these dry. We have a bunch of exclusive sauces. And you know what that means. Sauce talk. Sauce talk. Started off the Buffalo Ranch. Thank you, Nuggets. Let's go. Yeah. The KFC sauce. Really good. Barbecue sauce. Honey barbecue, excuse me. Mm. Classic ranch. I don't know what the ranch situation out there in China is, but here we're doing all right with ranch. The ranch situation in America, solid. We also have a honey mustard sauce, a honey sauce, and a hot sauce. All three today, they did not have. Here in China, KFC has something called the DIY Kitchen, and they also have stuff from third-party vendors. Without further ado, let's dig in. First off, we have the chicken nuggets 
and the hot and spicy chicken with bone. If I was hungry and I wanted KFC, I'm going to order KFC. I'm not going to go and cook it myself. Isn't that the whole point of takeout of fast food? It's cooked for you. If you're so inclined, you can also make KFC's famous egg tarts at home. KFC is also offering secret recipe chicken fillets from a third party vendor, the whole cut sirloin steak, also from a third party. KFC also selling you pasta now. They come in mushroom and black pepper, carbonara and spag bowl. What are she? Oh, this is the spag bowl. <laughs> You've got your bolognese. You've got various condiments. Yeah, no to KFC pasta. No to KFC pasta, no to the burgers. Chicken is your lane, stay in that lane. They've also got rice. They come in four flavors. The original flavor chicken, Japanese style fried rice. What's Japanese about it? I can't tell. And this one is the Baked rice. This one is the French style roast chicken cheese baked rice. And probably the most understandable of the offerings in the DIY kitchen, the ice cream. So KFC have partnered up with Oatly. As you can tell, Oatly is just everywhere in China. It's so big. KFC also has this. It's called the modern ice cream. Although here in China, we call it the Madir. And it's got a really interesting history. This originates from a city in Northeast China called Harbin, where they hold the Ice and Snow Festival, if, if you know about that. And basically, modern Harbin was more or less built by the Russians. Um, the modern gets its name from a hotel that was built by a Russian, which also had a bakery and sold yogurts and ice cream. So this has become an institution especially if you go to Harbin in the winter for the Snow and Ice Festival when it's like minus 20, people are still queuing up on the street to get yourself one of these popsicles. It's been a, it's been a while. Let's see if the ice cream is still good to eat. <laughs> it does feel a little bit soft. Oh, it's like Frosty the Snowman once, uh, once summer's set in. You can just have a peek. <laughs> I'll be able to drink it soon. Mm. Salvageable. What still is going strong in the menu is the pot pie. Man, this thing is hot. Aye. I don't want to disrespect any of the pot pie heads watching, but I've never seen anyone order this. I've never seen anyone eat this. This thing is gigantic. You can't get this as a side. So someone in this country, assuming lots of people, are walking into Kentucky fried chicken and getting a pot pie. I don't know why you're doing this. Pot pie is perfectly fine. I feel like this could totally go on the menu. If you want to fight me in the comments, go for it. But I've never met a person who gets this and eats it. And uh, this is kind of my job. We'll do a taste test later. As for now, moving on to the famous bowl. I don't think this exists outside of America, so let me go ahead and explain it. It basically is every side plus popcorn chicken, or in this case, nuggets, in one thing. Mashed potatoes, gravy, cheese, corn, and yeah, bits of chicken. Look, it's not that I don't like all these things, but together in one dish is kind of, mm. So what you're really doing is getting a side of mashed potatoes and gravy and sprinkling some cheese, corn, and chicken on it. I don't know if people were complaining on the internet, the famous bowl is so good, now they have the mac and cheese bowl, which is mac and cheese with chicken on it. And these are the nuggets. Remember I said before the popcorn chicken is still in this? I mean, isn't this popcorn chicken? Are these too big to be popcorn chickens? Is this nuggets that have replaced the popcorn chicken? I want answers. The nuggets are fine, and the mac and cheese is too, but together, they don't add anything. The only thing it's doing is being like, why get it in two containers? Just get it in one. Speaking of mac and cheese, exclusive sides in the US, you, you can get your mac and cheese without chunks of chicken in it. Just regular mac and cheese. Uh, our biscuits. Oh, so dry. Cold flaw. China. You don't want this. I, I mean, how do, how do you even explain coleslaw? Shredded lettuce, shredded cabbage, excuse me. All right, I don't even know what it is. With what, mayo and carrots and corn. Like McDonald's, KFC also has a late night street food menu. But unlike McDonald's, which only has one item, the chicken carcass, KFC has four and two different types of chicken carcass. 
I feel like the KFC version is maybe a bit bonier. So this is probably the Citroen version then. Let's take one of these fellas out. I think preferable to the original. This is pretty interesting. This actually looks like original recipe chicken. This, in fact, is called the Ao Ao Big Chicken Carcass. Ao Ao is, uh, <laughs> is onomatopoeic and it's from the northeastern region of China. Basically, it's slang for howling, you know, that is gigantic and you're just, you're dying to eat it. So Joe, if you come to China and you want to order this, you know what you got to do. You just go up to the counter and be like, I want the oh, chicken. Got it. And then they'll know exactly what you want. You can also get fried chicken feet, but we've done one better and gotten the fried chicken feet and fragrant bones box. This is the chicken feet, obviously. There's also chicken neck. There's chicken wing tip, scapula meat. So all of the fiddly parts of the chicken in one convenient box for you to nibble on. These are all of our exclusive breakfast options. Okay, so first off, I just want to draw your attention to this. KFC has Xiao Long Bao. This is incredible because this is a super popular breakfast item. If you wake up early, you'll see lots of sellers sort of with bamboo steamers about as tall as you are, filled with these sorts of little bao. The KFC Xiao Long Bao. Oh! That's even better than my neighborhood breakfast place. Color me impressed. I'm very, very, very smitten with this. Plus they also provided a pack of vinegar because you can't eat bao without vinegar. Next we have the congees. In terms of flavors, we've got the century egg and pork, a staple congee. This would be sour pickle and chicken. And over here, we've got the chicken and egg. This is the century egg and pork. And he goes, I don't actually like century egg. It's stanky, but not as stanky as the like authentic century egg. And the you tiao, the crispy Chinese kruller or dough stick. I mean, there are so many different names for this thing, but this is the heart of every Chinese breakfast. This goes well with soy milk. You can dip it in soy milk, you can dip it in congee. It's like a churro, but not sweet. A bit chewy. These things are always best right out the, um, the wok. Continuing on with our Chinese breakfast. This is, this is just super cute. This is something that's called a tea egg. You get these in one or four. And if you're eating a tea egg, you gotta have some yu tiao. And if you're having your tail, you've got to have some congee. Mm -hmm. That's the trifecta. It's the holy trinity of Chinese breakfast. We have the crispy chicken spring rolls, although they've lost a bit of spring. What is... I feel like one of those sausage finger people from everything, everywhere, all at once. Like... <laughs> I didn't realize we were in the uh, floppy crispy spring roll universe. There's also a chicken chop and egg Chinese style roll. Although really this is, this is more of a wrap. And what do we have in here? We've got chicken breast that looks like cucumber, leek. This is what's known as a bao cui, which literally translates to thin and crispy. And it's meant to be thin and crispy, but it's more like thin and flaccid right now. I think this is tian mian sauce, which is, um, uh, a sweet bean paste. I have to say this. The Chinese breakfast at KFC is next level. I want all of that. Are you kidding me? All of that looks incredible. Next, let's talk about the non-Chinese breakfast. So we've got our panini offering right here. We're going to begin with the cheese and sausage panini. Just your regular, I think it's actually ciabatta bread. Now we've got the cheese, sausage and egg the cheese and chicken panini, the cheese and thick omelette panini. Now, this is interesting because this is a rolled omelette. I think in Japan, they would call it a tamagoyaki. Here, we've got the chicken chop thick rolled omelette, double panini, 
These three are special. We've got them just for you. They are new offerings on the KFC menu. In fact, KFC has been really good at updating its menu. Pretty much every month, they're going to have new stuff. This is the souffle lineup. The cheese and egg souffle panini. It's basically the same eggy thing, but it looks like it's worked out more in the gym. It's got a better pump. Next, we've got the chicken chop and egg souffle panini. I just want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Is it not the same thing? And I saved the fanciest of them all for last. This is the beef filet egg souffle. Oh, look at that. They even made it rhyme. Okay, it comes in its very own special box. Okay, so we've got the, the fluffy souffle and then there's mashed potato. <laughs> in my panini and the beef filet. Now we have le French again, le Francais. That was really bad. I, I'm, I'm pretty bad at the French accent, sorry. We have the smoked chicken French style croissant bread. It's basically a croissant which It's a square croissant with sesame seeds and le bacon and egg french style croissant bread the, the bacon and egg french style croissant bread if my accent was terrible not as impressed with the paninis uh the mood kind of got those here and of course if you can't get enough of the western style breakfast you can also get single add-on items such as an egg sunny side up uh, you can also get a nice juicy sausage hash browns Always a must. This is the egg and vegetable soup. Here we've got the Hong Kong style big crispy chicken thigh rice. This section beneath is just literally <laughs> filled with rice. And this is the spicy meat sauce grilled chicken rice. Here are two additional non-chicken sides that we have. Corn and wavy fries. Get a ch I get a whole chocolate cake to KFC in the US. I don't know why they don't sell it by slices. I guess it's for the whole family or whatever. What can I say about chocolate cake? It's chocolate's got frosting on it. It's very good. I'm not gonna bite into it. We're gonna donate it, so I don't wanna screw it up. Trust me, it's good. These are our exclusive desserts. Let's begin with KFC's bestseller, the Portuguese style egg tart, or just the egg tart for sure. And if you can't eat two whole egg tarts, then you can go for the baby egg tarts. Oh, look how cute they are. They're tiny. KFC offers a Basque cheesecake. And this is the red bean pie. That's delicious. KFC offers an original ice cream cone, but because we got it delivered, that's the cone. <laughs> and this is the ice cream. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, I guess that's how I'm supposed to take it out. I'm just gonna drink the ice cream. Here we go. This is a first. Oh, 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 okay, okay. All right, we're gonna put it back. Sundays, we've got four of them. Strawberry, brown sugar, and bubble sauce. I, I assume bubble as in bubble tea. This here is the mango grapefruit sundae. New on the menu, the North American blueberry sauce. Here, we've also got super soft mochi sundaes. This is the strawberry flavor. And this is the one that I guess is basically the milk tea version, but with mochi balls on top. Following on in the footsteps of the mochi sundae, there's also super soft KFC mochi ice cream, which comes in four flavors. This one is strawberry. Ah, no, this one's strawberry Oreo. You can also get regular strawberry, Oreo, and taro flavor. That's actually pretty tasty. Drinks. We got a bunch of them here in the US, starting down here. Something that is new to America, a lemon-lime beverage called Starry. Uh, Sierra Mist is out, Starry's in, and... Tastes almost exactly like 7-Up. You also get Mountain Dew. Oh yeah. A personal favorite, Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning. I think you only get it at KFC. It's like peach Mountain Dew. I know it's that good for me, man. It's so good. This is supposed to be a lemonade, but it's in fact 
more sweet lightning, not complaining, but you also get the Colonel's lemon in. And last but not least, sweet tea. Oh yeah. A sweet tea at KFC is good. Love all these beverages. These are all of our exclusive drinks. Let's begin over here with the most Chinese of them all. Soy milk. We have Budweiser. The nine fruits orange juice. Then you've got your milk tea with a very cute Colonel Sanders and a bubble tea, which is just as cute and has the little tapioca pearls at the bottom too. Over here, the three lemon tea consisting of lemon, lime, and orange. It's basically just lemon juice. Yeah, I can see why it's called three lemon. <laughs> the heartwarming three black goji oat drink. Oh, if you see the, if you can see the little bits of red stuff floating in there, it's got actual goji berries. It makes me feel like a middle-aged Chinese auntie with curlers in my hair, but in the best way possible. I feel, I don't know, I feel like I'm wearing PJs. I think was the Snowtop Coffee, which is basically an ice latte with a dollop of ice cream. And this, also would have looked different when it first arrived. This is called the cute bubble milk. Basically, it's just straight up milk with a layer of milk foam, and it would have had a smiley face dusted in cocoa powder. Oh, and I forgot to mention, there's also a hot lemon drink that we weren't able to get. These are the K-Coffees. K-Coffees come in hot or cold varieties. You can get Americano, your standard latte, your oat milk latte, your rich milk latte, your coconut latte. Then you can also get the vanilla latte, a hazelnut latte, sea salt and macadamia nut latte. And there's also your regular cappuccino and caramel macchiatos. Let's talk cultural perceptions. In terms of prestige, KFC really is the OG. They opened in 1987 before Mackey D's. And back then they would have also been seen as sort of a window to the West, this fancy cosmopolitan place to be seen. But over time, they've really become quite entrenched here in China. And they're now seen as a foreign fast food brand that I would say has a lot of Chinese characteristics. For example, the congee, the breakfast menu, etc. KFC's rep in this country, they're number one. They're number one with fast food, chicken. We got Popeyes, we got, I guess you want to put Chick-fil-A, but that's more sandwiches. As far as like fast chicken and the bone places, Wingstop is Wings and Popeyes and KFC. Reputation is pretty much like you're going to get a decent uh, piece of chicken and a lot of sides. In terms of convenience, KFC has its own delivery service, but it also uses third party suppliers like everybody else. Um, but unlike in the US where KFC is very much takeout focused. Here in China, they're more about the dine-in experience, especially with the extended family. KFC is incredibly convenient, reliable. Um, I wouldn't hang out at one or dine there. I would take it to go. One thing I should say about KFC, as much as they work on having quality control, you could tell if a KFC is good or bad by like how dark the chicken is when it comes out. Like the, you know, I, the one that we did today, I don't think they changed the oil. <laughs> And in a while, the, the chick was looking a little darker than it should. So that's kind of like a thing you gotta consider. Convenience, usually the service is pretty quick, but uh, it's April 27th. So if somebody watching this happened to get KFC from Uber or DoorDash on April 27th, around 11.30, and your meal took longer than you wanted, my fault. Uh, our big order pretty much backed everything up anyway. So it's usually convenient when you don't live in a neighborhood where they shoot a food wars. So in terms of adaptability, KFC, as we mentioned before, was the first to offer congee and uh, Chinese krilla, soy milk on their breakfast menus. Also, unlike McDonald's, which kind of played up its foreignness a little bit, KFC, when they came to the China market, had high level managers who actually spoke the language. And so they adapted very quickly. For example, there are lots of regional differences in terms of how much spicy people can eat. Like people over in Shanghai were complaining that the spicy chicken was too spicy, but people over in Hunan in central China were complaining that it wasn't spicy enough. So they were very quick to react. 
And then KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Kentucky. Kentucky's in the United States, so pretty much is local country tastes. Um, yeah, they, they do the Nashville hot thing. They occasionally bring sauces in and out, but... Rivals, KFC basically has none. I mean, it's, it's numero uno, over 9,000 stores, double the market share of McDonald's. Way, way, way far ahead in the distance. Unless they sit on their laurels, they're probably gonna be cruising at number one for a while. KFC versus Popeyes, I would say KFC has, in America, at least four times as many locations. Yeah, I think, I think Popeyes tastes better, but you know, then I mean, as far as business is concerned, KFC is not sweating it. In China, this spicy chicken burger is 19.5 yuan or 2.83 US dollars. A US spicy chicken sandwich is $6.99 or 48.10 yuan. That is a 147% price increase. Make it a meal, add a medium fries and a medium Pepsi, and the cost goes up to 42 yuan or $6.10, still less than the cost of a sandwich in the US. Our US combo with tax is $13.75 or 94.61 yuan. That is a 125.4% increase compared to China. Our most expensive single menu item is the fried chicken bucket and Budweiser meal which is 146 yuan or $21, and it gets you eight spicy wings, eight New Orleans wings, and four Budweiser's. I mean, I, I don't know where the other three went, honestly. They must have just gotten lost on the road or something. In the US, we have two menu items costing $49.99 or 343.97 yuan. That's either the 16-piece chicken meal or the 16-piece tenders meal. Both come with four large sides and eight biscuits. Unfortunately, KFC doesn't share its nutrition data with the public. But what we do know is that in 2020, Yum China, which owns KFC and Pizza Hut here in China, partnered with the Chinese Nutrition Society to research and apply best nutritional practices for the brand. KFC in the US does have nutrition info available. Here are a few stats. All right, if you get the Kentucky Grilled Chicken Drumstick, it's 80 calories. Crisp it up a little bit with the original recipe or the spicy, now it's 130 calories. Want to make it extra crispy? Like this one in my stomach? Now you've increased the calories to 170. That's 112.5% more calories than the Kentucky Grilled. Get real though, it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. If you want grilled chicken, go dust off your George Foreman. Speaking of calories, what menu items have the most? If you're going with a chicken, the extra crispy, a breast is 530 calories. Sandwich, the recently discontinued Double Down, has 950 calories. For reference, a Big Mac has 550. And for sides, the fries are the top of the list. An individual has 320 calories, and then the family size, which let's be honest, is for one person, uh, has 840 calories. I have been informed that my fellow producer, Yuli Song, said that their favorite thing on the KFC menu is in fact the pot pie. What next if you said something while I was going off about it? Oh God, there's peas in it? What else, what else is in here? What is this? From calorie counts to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Lay's in the US and in China. This is Food Wars. In China, Lay's chips come in 14, that's right, 14 sizes. Coming in at our smallest chip bag, 12 grams, 23, 40, there's a 45, but we couldn't get that. 60, 65, 70, 75 grams, 80, 90, 104, 116, 135, and 220 grams for our largest chip packet. In the US, Lay's come in six sizes. There's only four, let me explain. Down here, the smallest bag is the multi-pack 28 gram bag, the vending machine bag. Move one up to a 2.625 ounce or 74.4 grams, so specific. Then in the middle, which I couldn't find, is a 2.75 ounce or 78 gram bag. In the middle here, the I mean, this is the one you see everyone. The eight ounce or 226 gram bag. In the middle here, missing is the family size. Too tragic for the American family. They don't get to see the 10.5 ounce or 297.6 gram bag. But of course, the size that we always have, old reliable, the biggest size, the party size, 368 grams. 
That means the biggest bag in the US is 67.3% larger than the biggest bag in China. Well, it's not the size that matters, Joe. It's no, wait, no, actually it is the size. In the US, our flavored bags weigh less than the original flavored bags. Take this bag of barbecued Lay's. It weighs 7.75 ounces compared to the eight ounces you get with the original bag. Same price, but less product. Back in 2014, PepsiCo claimed, quote, the reason for the slightly higher price per ounce for flavored chips is the added seasoning. Interesting. So. Lays, can you explain to me why this bag of lightly salted chips is 7.75 or seven and three fourths like the flavored bags and not eight ounces of the regular salted bags where all this has for seasoning is less salt than the original. Hey, Lays, where's my salt? A 28 gram bag in the US supposedly contains 15 chips according to Lays website. Uh, let's see how accurate this is. I hate doing this. I really hate doing this. We don't have a 28 gram bag, so I'll count the number of chips in a 40 gram packet as a comparison. It's 1.43 times heavier, but is it just as plentiful? Four. 10, 11, I'm, I'm running out of big chips now. It's all the small ones. That yeah, seems like a lot more than 15. Closer to like 21. That was very generous of you, Lays. I see the finish line, that's roughly 24, and oh, 25 chips in a 40 gram packet. Okay, I am already incredibly impressed at the number of chips they managed to fit into this bag, but they really could have put more in there, and we all know that Lay's chip bags are mostly filled with air anyway. It's actually nitrogen gas, which helps preserve the chips and also acts as a cushion to stop them from getting smashed in transit. I mean, Okay. But what is the air to chip ratio, you ask? It's a rhetorical question, let's find out. I'm going to take the smallest packet that we have, the 12 grams. So that's 533.3 milliliters. I feel like I'm on the Food Network. Okay, now we need to find out the volume of the chips. 15. Our ratio is 0.028 chips to air, which makes it 2.8% chips, and the rest of it is all air. It's incredibly scientifically accurate. Experiment yields 575 milliliters in the bag. Let's do five bags, and then we'll just get a bigger number than divide that by five, because we'll have an average. Smart? Great. Oh yeah. I, you guys have no idea how satisfying this is. <laughs> Born in 25 divided by five equals 85. I forgot what it was. Can someone do that on screen for us, please? And there's the number we've been trying to get. Here are all the Lay's chips from China that you won't find in the US. And here are most of the Lay's chips from the US you won't find in China. All right, let's start with the exclusive flavors for the classic chip style. Now, these four are the most common flavors that you'll find here on the Chinese market, beginning with Italian red meat. <laughs> wow, it's nice and red. They were probably going for bolognese sauce here. It's not offensive, but you also can't quite place what exactly they were trying to do. Next, we have the Mexican chicken tomato. Mmm! Oh, that is delicious! Next, we have the Texas grilled barbecue flavor. It tastes savory. Last but not least, cucumber flavor. Why? Just why? I don't know what I'm eating. What is this? It's sweet, it's refreshing, it has an aftertaste of cucumber. I want to ask why, but I also kind of, I'm okay with it. It's, it's kind of nice. You know, I, I wonder if these are popular because they're foreign flavors, because we don't know what Italian red meat or Mexican chicken tomato is supposed to taste like, and apparently neither do you guys. All right, let's move on to our exclusive local flavors. The spicy crayfish, or as you guys in the US would call them, crawfish. Yes, that smells legit. Oh, 
It tastes a little bit less crayfish than it smells like crayfish. No, no, that's good, that's good. Oh, it's got that aftertaste. Mm. Wow, that is pretty authentic. Roasted cumin lamb skewer. Hands down, my all-time favorite street food. This is iconic, especially in summer. You'll see people hanging out in the alleys with their tank top rolled up, so their belly is exposed. We call that the Beijing bikini here. And then they'll be holding a, a bunch of these skewers with meat, just ripping them off and slamming back the beers. Oh, best things about China. Uh, it's street food, honestly. Hmm. No, I can see it's there. It's not as meaty as I would like, but then look, it's a potato chip, all right? I think they've done pretty well. Uh, what do we have here? Seaweed flavor. Roast garlic oyster. I think they should just rename this lineup to the street food edition. <laughs> Wasabi flavor. Oh, ho, 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 ho. If you finish a bag of this, block nose, gone. Mm. Fried crab. Holy crab. Wow, they've done really well. <laughs> Numb and spicy hot pot. Mm. It's spicy. I haven't got the numb yet. Maybe I need to eat more. The more you eat hot pot, the more the, the broth simmers down, the spicier it becomes. So at the end, your hot pot is way spicier than at the start. This feels a little bit like that right now. Here we have another popular flavor from the South, from Sichuan. This is roast fish. And we've got a special flavor from a past season, truffle. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, maybe I'm just lowbrow. I don't like the flavor of truffle. It tastes like a, a wet forest. No, oh, no thank you. Hold these up. We have a lot, so many exclusive flavors. It's quite robust. Uh, I was not able to get all of them. Season ones I could find here in Southern California. First one, salt and vinegar. Come on, China. I like salt and vinegar better than plain potato chips. Sweet Southern heat barbecue. Different than a regular barbecue. Sweet and barbecue flavor. I think I like these better than regular barbecue chips. Let's compare. Regular US barbecue. Sweet Southern heat. These are better. Speaking of barbecue, honey barbecue. That's just okay, you know, this is not very honey-ish. The one with the sweet is sweeter than the one with honey. Go figure. Oh yeah, cheddar and sour cream. I mean, this thing. No, top five over here. These are really good. We got limon flavored. These are lime flavored chips with, I don't know who this person is. This is a guy in Ted Lasso. I don't know who this is. Cezando, is that his name? It's like a one. I have no idea what. <laughs> yeah. What? Lime and potato together? Who'd have thought? I hate pickles. I hate... But I like dill. But I should, in theory, like this. Nope. Ugh. Go away forever. Do not like <laughs> dill flavored chips. They also have flaming hot dill pickle chips. Couldn't get my hands on a bag, but I did get my hands on a bag of just the flaming hot chips. Oh, man. It's like really red. Flaming hot? Yeah. Yep. Spicy, yes. Flavorful, not so much. Ones I think I'm gonna like. Chili lemon. Not as spicy. Way more flavorful. Oh yeah, and the lime aftertaste. Wow, these are fantastic. These might be my favorite. If I had to organize these in my uh, favorites, these are my favorite. These are delicious. These are all really good. Everything to hear on is like wood grab, do enjoy. The honey barbecue is not that sweet. Flaming hot, yeah, hot, but not really flavorful. And dill pickles, pickles suck. You can also get the adobas flavor, the Doritos Cool Ranch Lays flavor, and a cheddar jalapeno, which I really wanted to get. Couldn't get my hands on it, I was really bummed.
All right, on to our regional limited, starting with the spicy chicken with rattan pepper. Now, this is a very popular dish from Sichuan province down in southwest China. That aroma is legit, very legit. This is way more numbing than the spicy and numbing hot pot. And more spicy too. The hot pot strikes back. This time it's the spicy hot pot. Nah, I don't taste the beef oil in there. I don't get the savory. Nah, this is meh. Sesame sauce hot pot. This is a Cantonese flavor. Ah, for once. This is Sam Tung roast goose flavor. Oh! Oh, well done. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Ha. Huh. Sam Tung, represent. Hmm. Marinated chicken feet. Lin Yi stir fried chicken. Now, this originates from Shandong province, which is over in eastern China. They're quite fond of their stews and braises over there, meats and vegetables that have been cooked for a very long time. So, hopefully, this will be very flavorful. Okay, so I, I can taste the sort of. Um, a roast meat flavor, especially when you cook with a Chinese wok, there's a bit of smokiness that is attached to the, to the meat after you've cooked it. I feel like I'm getting that here. We're back to the Chinese flavors again. This is, um, it's called la zi ji, so it's basically stir fried chicken in a mountain of chilies. You know that the whole point of la zi ji is not to eat tons of chicken, but to find chicken from within the mountain of chilies. It's a dish that goes especially well with beer. There we go. We have another hot pot. This I think is the most pointless kind of hot pot. This is hot pot for people who can't eat spicy or numbing hot pot. For people like you out there, we have tomato hot pot. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> it's quite tasty. And now for our 2023 Spring lineup, beginning with oh, salt and pepper mantis shrimp. What do we have next? Oh, beef Wellington. Oh my god. Oh, I, I'm speechless. This leaves me very confused. It just tastes like butter. And last but not least, we've got the Takoyaki flavored chips. These are uh, Japanese street food. Mmm. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, the smokiness is on point. We have a bunch of chip style varieties in the US, starting with another thick chip variety kettle cooked. I don't know what it means. I'm assuming they cook them in a kettle. I don't know how. I don't know how to make regular chips. There's so many flavors to choose from sea salt and vinegar, sea salt and cracked pepper, mesquite barbecue, jalapeno. Everyone not in the US, I wanna tell you right now, these chips, fantastic. These might be my favorite chips. These are so good. Mmm. Other flavors include original, flaming hot, and Maui onion. All right, now onto our selection of wavy and wavy limited. Beginning with our roast chicken wing. This feels thicker than the regular chip, very crunchy. I'm starting to get the roast chicken in there. That's decent. The roast squid. Not that big a fan of roast squid, to be honest, but I will try the roast pork. It's tasty, but I can't really get the pork in there. I think the chicken is still better. This just says pure spicy. As if we haven't already eaten enough spicy chips. And tomato, nah, nah. This can stay unopened. Moving on to our Wavy Limited. These are a collaboration with another snack brand here in China called Huang Fei Hong, who make spicy peanuts. Uh, this one is hot and sour chicken feet. This is the spicy peanut flavor for which the Huang Fei Hong brand is best known. Mmm. <laughs> Tastes like spicy peanuts, but in chip form. Okay, I'm sure many of you must be super curious as to what this is. This is Lay's Choco Ridge, which is a collab with a brand that's literally called 
Le Cake. Uh, this is their cheesecake flavored chocolate rich. I've never had this either. A sweet dessert glaze. Wow. This is so wrong that it's so right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I have very high expectations for this now. This is the Choco Ridge Chocolate Truffle. Here you can actually see how it's literally just a, a regular Lay's Crisp covered in chocolate. Well done. Oh, this is a good collab. We have something similar, our wavy style chips. Uh, these are three of the many options you can get here in the US. Of course, starting with original. We also have Hickory Barbecue. This, this, this is like they combined Funyuns and Wavy together. Oh, these are weird. Let's skip those. You can also get Wavy Reduced Fat Original, Wavy Ranch, Wavy Salt and Pepper, and Wavy Lightly Salted. Now, onto our non-potato options, of which we have a lot. These are all yam. Yams have subcategories of yam crisps and yam rolls as well. These are the black sesame and chia seed yam crisps. Man, they sound healthy, don't they? So uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, black sesame is thought to help with hair growth. I've been recommended it a lot. Now I can taste the nuttiness of the black sesame. Mmm. And I feel like my hairline is coming back any moment now. This is also something that adheres to traditional Chinese medicine. Chinese dates and goji berries. These are delicious. Wow. Here we have pastoral tomatoes. Roast chicken wing. Onto our yam rolls. These are an upgraded version of the crisps that you see. This is steak with tartary buckwheat. These things are so wafer thin. They have like this amazing crunch. They're airy, they're light. The very slight bitterness of the buckwheat lends itself very well to the steak. Fragrant red stew consisting of yam and highland barley, which is the main cereal planted on the Tibet Tinghai Plateau. We also have taro and sweet potato chips. This one is with black pepper and sea salt. It's very thin yet it's not crispy. It feels almost a little bit soggy. Refreshing lime. Why, what's with all the refreshing chips? Pass. Sweet potato chips, natural flavor. I know this probably frustrates some of you at home, but the majority of people here in China open crisp packets like this, as opposed to horizontally, like in the West, because it's easier to open this way, easier to share. When you reach in, you don't get salt stuck to your hand. And it's also just less effort. I mean, we don't need to brute weigh our way into things. Not gonna lie, it's not so bad. So we had the regular sweet, sweet potato chips. Now we have sweet potato chips with added brown sugar. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, why? No. Oh. I'm not gonna waste as little time as possible on these big chips. They just, for people who want their chips to be more brittle and less flavored, I don't know, these suck. You have original or barbecue. Here's original. I mean, this is the third time we've done this. Don't bother. Just trust me. Don't bother. Listen. They're all destroyed in there. Just, they don't have no taste. They're flimsy. They're baked. They're bad. There's the Better For You and Simply brand. Uh, the Better For You is a lightly salted, lightly salted barbecue, wavy, lightly salted, all these right here. I get it. Sodium can be an issue if you're snacking chips a lot, so why not go with the lightly salted? Uh, maybe, I mean, 50% 50 50 less sodium. That's pretty good, right? I mean, how do these, I'm curious how these compare to them. Is that 50% less? This is 100% less. I don't taste anything. Also, the Simply, I guess the whole deal is they just use simpler ingredients. Made with three simple ingredients, potatoes, sunflower oil, and sea salts. There's also the Simply Barbecue Thick Cut. I mean, how much better could it be? We also have two exclusives from the Simply lineup, which have 50% less saturated fat, the Refreshing Lime, 
and the seaweed. Guess what? We even have Lay's French fries. Let's go with the original flavor. These come in really big packets, by the way. It's so incredibly salty. I am so glad that they only gave us this tiny packet because I'm gonna just, no, I don't want the rest. Ugh. Cheese and butter French fries. Pink grapefruit flavor. I mean, you, you, you can't see this and not try it. This is really good. <laughs> this is so weird, but it's really good. Hot pink grapefruit lays. I'm gonna pick that up and eat it. That's that good. Mmm, <laughs> We also have seaweed flavor French fries and tomato flavor French fries. But I am dying to try this. Purple potato French fries. Oh, I don't even know what that tastes like. No. Now we have one more non-potato chip Lay's. The air fried chicken breast. I have absolutely no idea how much chicken is in here. It looks like very tiny pizzas or little crackers. It leaves me very confused. I do taste the chicken, but hey, this is an interesting flavor. Ugh. Stacks, stacks, stacks. If you've seen any of the Lay's Food Wars we've done, I hate these for every reason. They are Pringle-shaped chips in plastic tubes instead of plastic bags. First of all, worst container, right? Does that sound like uh, some chips are uh, intact? These chips are really messed up, man. Not a pleasant experience at all, but I'm contractually obligated to tell you, besides these two flavors, you can also get stacks in mesquite barbecue, cheddar, salt and vinegar, bacon and cheddar potato skins, buffalo wings with ranch, extra flaming hot, flamas, and chili limon. Please don't get them. Trust me, they suck. We've got Stacks too, and in many more flavors, as you can tell. Uh, Stacks is basically Lay's take on the Pringles. But whereas Pringles took 10 years to come up with their saddle-shaped chip, which is actually known as a double-curved hyperbolic paraboloid, Stacks went with a single-curved hyperbolic cylinder. So you can actually see the difference in the shape of the chip right here. The Stacks, by the way, comes with a fancy schmancy plastic tray that's meant to keep it from breaking, but hasn't worked very well in this case. Here is an intact Stacks, and here is an intact Pringle. To be honest, they kind of look similar. The Pringle has an extra curve down here, whereas the Stacks down here appears to be a, a bit more flat. Now the Stacks, also comes in tomato flavor, cucumber flavor. There are some flavors that I would love to try, such as the sizzled barbecue flavor. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, wow. This is a good plastic tray. Yeah, it's all right. Black pepper ribeye steak. This I am actually very excited to try. Finger licking red braised pork. There's maybe a hint of pork in there and some sugar and some caramelizing, but that's pretty much it. Mm. Okay, we've got one for you Stax fans out there. These are the Stax Premium, the Stax Black. The Chinese name actually says Potato Workshop. Uh, and apparently it has real food ingredients. So this is avocado with mustard. 
why. Okay, now we have purple potato, so basically sweet potato, with coconut milk. Maybe it's an acquired taste. Ooh. I mean, you guys know I don't like truffle now anyway. I'm pretty low brow, but this is black truffle and black pepper flavored potato chip. Spanish ham flavored potato chips. I love me some Iberico jamón. I am praying that this is gonna be tasty. Fire them all, the rubbish. This is spicy crawfish. Mmm. Oh, yes. Okay. Finally, we have a winner from the Stax Premium lineup. This is great. And I would say that this tastes even more authentic than the regular potato chip version of the spicy crayfish that we had earlier. Oh, roast chicken skewer, wagyu beef, sour and sweet rose petals. Oh, come on, ladies, you're just playing with me now. This is delicious. <laughs> wow. Imagine sitting in a nice, warm, milky bath, floating with rose petals and eating this sweet and sour rose petal lace. Wow, that would be the best evening ever. Wow. This is great, fantastic. We have a seaweed flavor. I like my seaweed. We've had too much seaweed today. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be okay. We also got Papa Bowls. These are so stupid. What is this? We don't need a new shape. Tell everyone in the biz, we don't need new shapes. So I don't know what this thing's supposed to be, but you can get it in sea salt, honey barbecue, sea salt and vinegar, white cheddar. Look, look at this, it's all hollow inside and, well, oh. ugh. It's like a giant Chex. What, 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 are we, what are we doing here? Ladies, what are we doing here? Why, what, what, what? What? Now I know Lay's seems like going hard on you guys, but I have to say, ending with the dips, Lay's dips are fantastic. They have three to choose from, the smooth ranch, the French onion, and the creamy jalapeno. Couldn't get it. This French onion dip is drugs. Any chip works with it? Let's do my favorite kettle, jalapeno. Stellar. This dip works on literally everything. I would put this in my coffee if I could. It is so great. Fantastic. The dips are great. Check them out. A 75 gram bag of American classic Lay's in China is 7.3 yuan or 1.06 dollars. Our closest size to the 75 gram bag is the 74.4 gram bag, so 0.6 grams less. And it's $2.48 or 17.04 yuan. That is a 134% cost increase in the US. Right, but then if you take into account purchasing power parity, then Lay's charges the highest price in the world for its chips here in China. So here in China, even though the chip market only accounts for 15% of the snack industry, Lay's accounts for 50% of that chip market. These guys are definitely the creme de la creme when it comes to potato chips here in China. And they've got such a wide variety of flavors that you will see them always in a prime shelf location in every convenience store across the country. Lay's in the US, Lay's is like the chip, right? There's other chip brands, but Lay's, probably the most ubiquitous. You see them everywhere. They have so many different options and styles. I think any type of potato chip that is even remotely popular, Lay's has a knockoff version of it. Always good, always available, always decently priced, I guess. I think Lay's has been incredible in adapting to the Chinese market. They've basically gone and found all of the popular flavors and combinations in China, whether it's street food or restaurant food, and put them into a convenient and portable chip packet. Lay's is incredible at adapting because as you saw before, every like style they have besides the regular potato chip is 
a style that another chip brand had that they just took on. The kettle chips, they, they taste just like Miss Vicky's. They got the wavy ones, which was Ruffles, right? Um, the Poppables, which I don't know, Bugles, checks. you tell me, any three-dimensional chip. The Stacks, which is going after Pringles. I mean, they, they're bloodthirsty, this company. They will go after anyone. Our classic glaze, aka the American flavor, are made of potatoes, oil, American classic original seasoning, which is comprised of edible salt, monosodium glutamate, five flavor, nucleotide disodium, and silicon dioxide. Our classic glaze are made up of potatoes, vegetable oil, which is canola, corn, soybean, and or sunflower oil, and salt. Now there are two ingredients we wanted to highlight, which are monosodium glutamate, aka MSG, and five flavor nucleotide disodium. These two ingredients are used to give our chips a savory umami flavor. Ah, oh, MSG, it's the uh, black sheep of condiments. Now for those of you who don't know what MSG is, it's used to add savoriness to food and was also associated with something called Chinese restaurant syndrome, which has since been debunked many times. Turns out it was a hoax, but basically the gist is when you go to a Chinese restaurant, after eating its food, you'll feel headaches, dizziness, sore throat, loss of appetite. You know, MSG is not the culprit. It's naturally occurring in tomatoes and bone broths. It's found in fermented foods from cheese to Worcestershire sauce to soy sauce. And actually the vast majority of MSG in the world is made through fermentation, just like yogurt or vinegar. MSG was a cause for health concerns in the US for decades. And concern still lingers today, even though the FDA considers the addition of MSG to foods as being generally recognized as safe, GRAS. Both countries use the food coloring caramel color in our barbecued chips. Now, certain types of caramel color contain a byproduct called 4-MEI, 4-methylimidazole. And studies found that it caused cancer in rats and mice, which led to campaigns calling for it to be banned from foods. But it's also worth noting that this byproduct is found when you roast foods like coffee and meat. And the FDA was like, eh, it's fine. Humans don't come close to the levels of exposure that cause the rat tumors. That didn't stop the state of California adding it to its Proposition 65 list of chemicals, quote, known to the state of California to cause cancer or reproductive toxicity, end quotes. A 30 gram packet of China Lay's American classic flavor chips contains 162 calories, 1.7 grams of protein, 10.5 grams of fat, of which 5.3 grams are saturated fats, 15.1 grams of carbs, of which 0.4 grams are sugars, 0.8 grams of fiber, and 170 milligrams of sodium. A 20 gram bag of classic Lay's in the US contains 160 calories, total fat 10 grams, of which saturated 1.5 grams, carbs 15 grams, and 170 milligrams of sodium. We did find that the 160 calorie chips with the highest fat content are the cheddar and sour cream chips. Here's what's in a bag of those. 160 calories, 10 grams of fat, of which 1.5 are saturated, 15 grams of carbs, and 170 milligrams of sodium. Dun, dun, dun! We have a very shocking discovery. Apparently, Lay's healthiest chips are in fact they're least healthy in that they have more calories on average than any other Lay's product here in China. And the worst offender, oh, is my hair growth serum, the black sesame and chia seed yam crisp. Now, 100 grams of this will equal 598.7 calories or 168 calories for a 28 gram packet. Now, in a 30 gram portion, you'll have 179.6 calories, 1.6 grams of protein, 13.3 grams of fat, of which 6.6 .6 are saturated fat, 13.7 grams of carbs and 212 milligrams of sodium, which means that 
the healthy yam chips are on average 11% more calorific than any other Lay's chips, containing less protein and carbs and more sodium and fat. You know, I always thought healthy just meant not tasty, but in Lay's case, apparently it also means less healthy. <laughs> what a plot twist. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Burger King in the US and in China. This is Food Wars. Hey, it's Joe. I'm busy working on some cool new videos for you and not be able to host today, but I want to introduce you to my good friend, Nico. I trust Nico's going to do a fantastic job. All the Food Wars heads watching, make her feel welcome. Take it away, Nico. Here in China, our Burger King drinks come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. In the US, our Burger King drinks come in four sizes, value, which we weren't able to get, small, medium, and large. Let's see how much our largest drink actually contains. I'm kind of okay with it. They're lying to me. Our Burger King fries also come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Our fries come in four sizes, value, small, medium, and large. Let's weigh our largest fries. 120. 140 grams. Liars again! Uh, this is the second lie I've been told in like five minutes. I think Joe and Harry have beef with Burger King ever since hashtag Frygate 2020. They discovered the small and medium sizes were the same size, allegedly. Allegedly. I do not want to get sued, but let's see if both of them actually do weigh the same. I don't think that I have to count every individual fry because that is a very big difference. I think there's clearly some discrepancies going on. Just for fun, let's weigh these value fries. These are 98. What's happening? What's going on at Burger King? So I guess you can get away with just ordering a value size for like way less money if this is what's going on. Our chicken fries come in one size only and should contain six fries. Ta -da! No way to escape from giving us the full amount here because only six of them. Ours is also one size, nine chicken fries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the first time the Burger King hasn't lied straight to my face. Let's begin with our beef burgers. We can start with the King's collection, which I guess are BK's premium burgers, whereas the Whoppers are known as Emperors, but they're cheaper than the King's. I can just hear the nationalists starting to get angry already. How could a king be more powerful and more expensive than an emperor? What gives? Obviously you haven't localized properly, BK. You need to know your audience. Beginning with the pastrami angus. It's not something that you see very often here in China to begin with. So in Chinese, the name is called the Big Mouse Angus Burger because the burger itself is meant to be quite a tall burger. But this is a very beautiful burger and I must say, I am very impressed that it has not come to us sloppy and completely crushed into paste, which was the case that we found with other fast food chains. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> very dense. I did have to open my mouth pretty wide and I can't quite taste the pastrami, but I like that it's there. Here we've got the classic Angus. You can also get the spicy version, which is what I've opted for. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a spicy bella. This is actually pretty interesting. It's not the Sichuan spicy kind of heat that I've gotten used to here, eating other localized burgers in China, but this is more sort of a straight up in your face heat. A lot of black pepper and the caramelized onions. Oh, they pair very well in this burger. Introducing the heavy cheese beef king. So heavy, actually, it even crushed the box that it came in. Well, hello. The spicy bamboo shoots beef chicken whopper. That is such a long name. It came in this box. These are characters from a massive game in China called The Honor of Kings. It's a, a MOBA. The company that makes this bought Riot Games, which made League of Legends. The fact that it has this collab, I mean, that means something. I just want to say it tastes very Chinese. In the best possible way, it feels like I'm in Southwest China right now, playing a game of Honor of Kings and losing badly. Because otherwise, how would I have time to eat burgers if I'm not respawning? 
final member of the King collection is the Italian spinach bacon Angus. Oh, one thing that irks me a little bit about bacon in burgers in China is that they're this kind of bacon, they're wet. And what's the point of eating bacon if it's not crispy? Oh my God, BK burgers are so incredibly dense. They're like the burger versions of diamonds. Moving on to our classic burgers. This is the King Oyster Mushroom Beef Whopper Thai Basil flavor. My God. Not only are there burgers mouthfuls, but so are the names. You could actually see the oyster mushrooms. Look, right here. Let's give this mouthful a mouthful. It feels like I'm in the gym about to do some really heavy lifting. And then... Another classic, the grilled pineapple whopper. One gigantic pineapple ring. If I had two more hands, so, oh, the pork cubes and beef burger. Who names these things? The pork cubes that it refers to is pork neck. The meat lover's heaven, isn't it? I could do this. <laughs> I feel like my jaw's about to break. Oh, yes. Wow. That is amazing. This pork neck is just absolutely delicious. Moving on to our value section, we've got the Spicy Whopper Junior. Oh, look at this little guy. You can also get the Pineapple Bacon Whopper Junior also in this size. This is our bacon corner. So we have the Bacon King and there is a bacon cheeseburger and a double bacon cheeseburger. I really want to taste the Bacon King. That's like a big burger for fast food, right? That is heavy too. My face is bigger, but it doesn't smell as good as this burger does. <laughs> kind of tastes like a burger right off the grill. This is like insane how big they are. Now let's move on to the Whoppers. I think these are definitely Burger King's claim to fame. It's what they're most known for. This is the Texas Double Whopper. This kind of looks like the Mondo Burger from Good Burger. That is not ASMR. What's the opposite of ASMR? And the last Whopper we have is the Impossible Whopper, which I actually think tastes pretty delicious. It's like this looks like a hamburger from like a play food set I had as a child. It just doesn't look very real. This looks like a monster. I do want to take a bite of the Texas Double Whopper just because it's got a lot of stuff in it. That is so good. Oh my God, it's really spicy. And here we have our single rodeo clown king <laughs> burger. Single rodeo burger king pounder. All of them share the exact same words. It's crazy. And here we have the single quarter pound king and the rodeo burger, which I think has onion rings in it. I was wrong. Okay, pretend I said the opposite. So this is the rodeo burger and it's got onion rings and what looks like sticky barbecue sauce. It's just a little congealed in there. I think it could be good. It's just not very good. Now let's move on to the chicken sandwiches or burgers, whichever you prefer. As for chicken, you can get the chicken whopper coming in classic or spicy flavors. You can get the grilled pineapple chicken whopper as well. Next, we've got the chicken big king. Now the big king is a collection and we have beef, which is not exclusive here in China, but chicken and fish are. And it's basically kind of like a Big Mac in that there are two patties and a bun in the middle. That's a lot of bread. This here is the Fruitwood Grilled Chicken Burger. Spicy chicken burger. The chicken is threatening to escape. Oh yeah, the more you chew it, mmm. The more you chew it, the more flavorful it becomes. And now I can, it's, it's almost like a thermometer in my mouth. I can, I can feel the spiciness rising up. I swallowed just now and my saliva is spicy. We have the crispy chicken sandwich, but what makes this a sandwich and this a burger? I have no idea. There's also a double version of that, excuse my lettuce, that is called the double chicken burger. So if it's a single, it's a crispy chicken sandwich, but if it's a double, then it just becomes something else. 
Anyway, this also comes in original or rattan pepper flavor. Here we have the chicken version of the Italian spinach bacon whopper. A surprise for you all. <laughs> this is new on the menu. Da, da, da. The black cheese and crispy chicken sandwich. So this thing is not nori. This is actually a slice of cheddar cheese that's been dyed black with squid ink because just why not so if you thought this was weird check this out <laughs> this is the black cheese and crispy chicken burger most importantly instead of the the bun they've replaced it with two pieces of black cheese <laughs> mind blown i think this is basically just an excuse for you to not feel guilty about eating a piece of spicy chicken by itself without the bread. It's basically just there as like tissue to help you eat this thing. We have two chicken exclusives, the original chicken sandwich and the chicken junior. This shape is actually very unique and pretty iconic in a world of circular chicken sandwiches. Like this stands out to me. Usually the chicken sandwiches I see look like this. Just, you know, nothing special, but this is special. BK also offers fish exclusives. Here we've got the fish and crisp, which I believe uses a cod fillet. And of course, the fish version of the big egg. And of course, we also have a pork section comprising of two burgers, the pork neck and beef burger, which I took a nice big chunk out of before, and the chicken version of this pork burger. And here is our fish option, the big fish. This is the smoothest bun I've ever seen. Look how shiny and beautiful that is. It's not offensive, not particularly great. These are our exclusive snacks here in Burger King China. I feel like they're encroaching on KFC territory a little bit because all of this is chicken. We've got the Mahala chicken drumstick. So mala literally just means numb and spicy and it's referring to the Sichuanese style of cooking with the peppercorn which gives you the numbness and the chili heat. <laughs> oh wow I feel like this is probably the strongest mala flavor that I've had thus far on Food Wars starting to turn my tongue numb. I'm quite pleasantly surprised. Here we got the petite version, the mala chicken wings. This here, the king hot and spicy chicken wings. Oh man, I much prefer it over the mala to be honest. This is a lot more balanced. It's more flavorful, it's meatier. So these are called the spicy flavor chicken slices. Apparently it's four millimeter thin slices of chicken breast. It just kind of looks like mini chicken nuggets, doesn't it? This is the chicken box, which contains a medley of what we sampled earlier. So Burger King also has other versions of the bucket, the box, whatever you like to call it. They've got the King Chicken Bucket, the King Bucket, and the King Bucket Plus. They're basically the BK version of the party bucket or family bucket. For those of you who could not get enough of the black cheese, you can also get it as a standalone piece, just one piece of good old cheddar cheese dyed black with squid ink. Oh, BK, you are so funny. You can always opt for the garden salad. And here in Chinese, it actually says, Mama is shouting at you, telling you to eat more veggies. And these are our exclusive side options. We have onion rings. Don't mind if I do. You're soggy. And we also have mozzarella sticks, which I feel like at this point are fully congealed back into their like frozen state. These were supposed to come with a marinara sauce. I don't think I got one. We also have mozz applesauce as a side, but they unfortunately ran out. And here are our exclusive sauces. Sauce talk. We have buffalo ranch, honey mustard, and zesty. I know what pretty much all these sauces taste like, except for zesty. I'm very confused as to what this could be. 
I'm gonna swatch this one for you guys, just so you can see what it looks like on my skin tone. This is the most disturbing, stupid thing I've ever done. Horseradishy. I feel like zesty gives me like, ooh, zesty. This is like, ooh, zesty. It's nasty. Time for dessert. We can start with the Ovaltine King Fusion. This comes in original strawberry and brown sugar bubble flavor. The Ovaltine was the little sort of brown flakes on top. That's what tastes like milk chocolate. Not bad, it's not as sweet as I thought it would be. Ovaltine King Fusion Brown Sugar Bubble Edition. Very elusive to these things. Where are they? Oh, here we go. Mmm, delicious. Once upon a time, this was the Hokkaido Flavor Ice Cream Waffle Cone. <laughs> it tastes like melted ice cream, I can't tell. <laughs> if you say it's Hokkaido, I'm none the wiser. This is the Crispy Chocolate and Nuts Sundae. Hagen dash Ben and Jerry, get out the way. BK's in town. Look at that, that looks luxe. And look at how much chocolate is in here. This is basically half a bar of chocolate in ice cream. There's nothing that could be better than this. I think it's peanut, I'm not sure. Who cares? Oh, it's delicious. And the strawberry pulp sundae. Actual strawberry in the sundae. Color me impressed. This pie comes in two different flavors. Dark chocolate or mango and coconut. Let me check which one this is. I think it's a telltale sign. I think it's probably the chocolate. Deep fried chocolate. What could go wrong? These are called crispy thick milk bars. It's creamy, but it doesn't really taste like much. This is the soft mochi ice cream and it comes in two flavors, strawberry yogurt and salted egg. <laughs> wow. It's kind of like a custard. Oh, ho, 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 ho. this kind of tastes like what would happen if you took the heart out of a mooncake and liquefied it and just drank it. Oh my god, I think I'm seeing stars from my blood sugar spiking. Let's talk about desserts. At Burger King in the US, you can get a soft serve cup, a soft serve cone, or the Hershey's Sunday pie. This was one of my favorite things ever as a kid. I would always get it every time we went to Burger King. Look at this. It literally says yum on every side because it's that good. They look exactly the same as when I was little. That is so delicious. These are the exclusive drinks on the Burger King China menu. It looks weird, doesn't it? It just looks like 7-Up. But this is actually coconut flavored lemon sparkling drink. Peach flavor oolong tea. This is the brown sugar boba milk tea. You can get this hot or cold. And also, if you take away the boba balls, it will just basically become the Hong Kong style milk tea, which you can also get hot or cold. <laughs> the crispy chocolate, no top milk tea. You can also get Ceylon tea, which is just black tea, or hot or cold soy milk, which this is. You can get juice too, grapefruit juice and mixed berries juice. Next, we have the King Coffee Collection, and this is just honestly the cutest cup ever. You can get your latte or your flat white, your hazelnut latte or cappuccino in this very, very cute squat cup. Or if you don't like being cute, you can just opt for a regular sized Americano. Drink exclusives in the US include Coke Zero, Sprite Zero, Barks Root Beer, Dr. Pepper, Fanta Orange, Mellow Yellow, Powerade Zero, High C Fruit Punch, and High C Pink Lemonade. It's a fast food restaurant, so of course they also offer milkshakes and frozen beverages. We have a vanilla milkshake, a chocolate milkshake, an Oreo milkshake, a chocolate Oreo milkshake, this is a frozen Fanta Wild Cherry, and this is supposed to be a frozen Coke, but it's another frozen Fanta Wild Cherry. We've been putting the people at Burger King through a lot today, so some mistakes were made. They also supposedly offer a strawberry milkshake, but that wasn't available at our Burger King. That was a better vanilla milkshake. All right, let's try this frozen Fanta Wild Cherry. Is this, this is basically just a slushy, right? 
That's very good. These are Burger King China's exclusive breakfast menus. Okay, so just like McDonald's and KFC, Burger King also does a pretty decent breakfast menu here in China. Not quite as extensive as KFC and nowhere near as exhaustive as McDonald's, but what Burger King has over both of them is the cross sandwich. I love cross up sandwiches. Although it's kind of weird how in China they're not called by their actual names, but they're called croissants. So this is the standard cross sandwich, the, or as we call it here in China, the pork egg and cheese croissant. Next, we have the pastrami and scrambled egg croissant. In Chinese, we would call it yang qi, which kind of means like Western style of uh, BK. I mean, obviously it's Western style, but the fact that you know, you have pastrami and scrambled egg. This combination just seems very, very foreign to Chinese culture. And I think in a, in a cool way, this is great. Just staying true to BK's roots. Mmm, I love pastrami. What do we got here? The beef egg cheese croissant. And last but not least in our croissant series, butter croissant, which is... <laughs> All right, BK, you made this a seasonal menu item. I don't understand what it has to do with seasons. It's literally just two pieces of your croissant bread. This is the double egg and beef burger. Two eggs with two beef patties sandwiched in between. No bread whatsoever. Uh, there is no way you can safely get away with eating this without making a mess of yourself. Now onto your more standard fare the grilled beef cheese muffin. You can also get this grilled beef cheese egg muffin. Oh, now we have something special. The tamagoyaki and fruit with flavor grilled chicken muffin. Look at that. Mmm. Oh, this is delicious. Well, I highly recommend it. And if you don't want beef in your muffin, you can get it as a cheese egg muffin. If you don't want egg nor beef, then you can get it as a grilled pork muffin. BK also has an assortment of breakfast wraps, the scrambled egg and cheese sausage wrap. Beijing style roasted chicken wrap. No leak! Just the cucumbers and the tianmian sauce. We're missing the last item on the holy trinity of the Beijing style wrap. You know, it's, it's inoffensive. That's all I can say. This is something special. Salted egg yolk chicken wrap. The salted egg yolk is actually smeared all over the chicken here. Ah, oh, that's very ingenious of BK. There's no mistaking that salted egg. Wow. Texture-wise, it's like, um, it's an egg yolk that has been matured. Kind of like a fine vintage egg, if that makes sense. And last but not least, we've got the mixed vegetable and roasted chicken wrap. And of course, we've got to have congee. Two types, this is century egg, and this is salted egg. Gives the century egg a try. Oh yeah, that's pretty strong. There's a very, very fine line between tasty and stinky, and century egg firmly straddles that line. I've never had salted egg yolk in a congee before. Congee's not my favorite breakfast item, but I think with this kind of flavoring out, yeah, I can dig it. And of course, on every single breakfast menu, there's gonna be crispy Chinese crawler, the you tiao. They all look the same, no matter which fast food chain you go to. BK also has a sunny side up egg, although, <laughs> again, you can't really tell where the sun is. Ho oh, ho, this is pretty interesting. The bean paste glutinous rice ball. We call them matoir, which kind of means sesame pile, <laughs> a mound. These have a really interesting history. They originated in the Tang Dynasty over a thousand years ago and were served up in the imperial kitchen. And actually you'll find that a lot of traditional Chinese desserts, especially here in Beijing, were originally served to the emperor. The sort of stuff that we eat now would have been the creme de la creme back in the old days, centuries ago when Emperors rule China. History in a mouthful. I'd say it's okay. It's probably not the tastiest sesame mound I've ever had, but you know, this isn't made for emperors because otherwise it'll be off with your head. Egg bacon pie. 
Oh, that's pretty tasty. The nostalgia is coming back in. I just remember growing up in the UK and then going down to Greg's and getting a nice pasty in the morning. Oh. I've actually never had Burger King breakfast. In the US, our breakfast sandwiches all come with different variations of sausage, bacon, ham, egg, and cheese. And they come in either a croissant, biscuit, or melt form. We couldn't get the melt form, but we do have the croissant and the biscuit in the loaded versions. Loaded just means that they come with all of the toppings they look like they're about to burst, so I believe that's true. In America, this is a biscuit. The salt that just got into, I, like I felt all the moisture in my body just disappear with that one bite, that was crazy. Here are all the different breakfast sandwich combinations that you can make at Burger King in the US. So you can also get the egg normous burrito or it's baby if you don't want that much of a burrito before like 10 a.m. We also have sweeter breakfast options like these pancakes with a sausage and the French toast sticks. It literally feels like I am chewing gum right now. That is crazy how stretchy and bouncy it is right now. They smell like they were just refried. It's also chewy, just like the pancakes, but a lot less disturbing in the mouth. So Burger King entered China in 2005, which actually makes it late to the game. KFC and Mackey D's have already been here for a decade by that point, and Chinese consumers know what Western fast food is like already. BK cultivates a slightly different image, one of slightly more prestige and you'll find them mostly in major cities, top tier cities like Beijing, Shanghai, less so in smaller cities. I feel like in the US, Burger King has the reputation of being somewhat fresher when it comes to ingredients. Maybe it's considered on the more fresher side when it comes to American fast food, even though it's probably not. Uh, it's pretty funny. In the past, Burger King has been criticized for its bad customer service, for its uh, rude servers. And the main thing was you couldn't even complain because they didn't have a complaints hotline. So <laughs> they kind of like, take it or leave it. Convenience, speed of service, that totally depends on your specific Burger King. Is it fast food still? Yes. You still get the food in around 10 to 15 minutes. It's just, will you be getting what you ordered? Who knows? That's part of the fun. I would say that Burger King out of McDonald's and KFC is the least localized. And so they're cultivating maybe the image of being a gourmet burger joint, a sort of a go between a regular fast food chain and an actual gourmet burger restaurant. When it comes to how they adapt to local tastes, I feel like there's nothing that special on the menu. It's pretty normal American fast food. They did have that one special Texas Whopper, which I've never been to Texas, so I can't really speak on how accurate that is, but it tasted really good. So in terms of competition, Burger King is actually fifth in China behind KFC, McDonald's, Wallace Burger and Chicken, which is a local brand, and Deco's, another local brand. McDonald's has to be Burger King's biggest rival. As we're filming this in early May, we've gotten word that Burger King is closing around 300 to 400 locations. A Whopper is 27 yuan, that's $3.92. In the US, a Whopper costs $7.89, which is an 101.3% price increase compared to China's Whopper. Make it a meal with a medium fry and a medium drink, and the price goes up to 40 yuan, which is $5.8. Add a medium fry and a drink to your order, and that brings the price up to 11.99, which is an 106.7 increase in price. And if you want to upgrade to large, then that's 44 yuan, which is $6.38. Make it a large in the US, and the price goes up to 12.59, which is a 97% increase in price. Just in general, I found that Burger King tends to be slightly more expensive than McDonald's and KFC. China's Burger King doesn't share its nutritional information, but here are a few noteworthy moments from the last couple of years. In 2020, Burger King apologized to its customers when it was reported that some of their locations had sold expired food. So a Burger King in Nanchang, which is a major city in eastern China, had used expired ingredients to make its burgers. And get this, there was actually video footage of staff replacing the date labels on the expired bread with new ones. 
And another Burger King in exactly the same city did the same thing with expired chicken. Burger King responded with, and I quote, Our mismanagement has betrayed the trust of consumers to Burger King and we express our deepest apologies for this. And this caused China to probe further into outer U.S. fast food chains like KFC and McDonald's. Burger King, along with McDonald's, was sued last year for using PFAS, or Forever Chemicals, in their packaging. Forever Chemicals? It's in my body forever? Consumer reports found PFAS in the French toast sticks bags, Whopper wrappers, and chicken nugget bags. We ate, like, two out of those three things today. Oh my god! PFAS are chemicals that are hard to break down and last a long time, which are not good for the environment, and PFAS exposure has been linked to health problems in humans. Burger King has responded in saying, quote, The Burger King brand has required that any added perfluoral alkyl and polyfluoral alkyl substances, PFAS, be phased out from all approved guest-facing packaging materials globally by the end of 2025 or sooner. That's not soon enough. From calorie counts to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Subway in the US and in China. This is Food Wars. Here in China, standard Subway subs come in two sizes, six inch and <laughs> 12 inch. They've done us the favor of cutting our 12 inch sub in half. How very kind. In the US, our subs also come in two sizes, a 6 inch or a 12 inch, also known as the foot long. We're gonna measure both of these with a tape measure to make sure that those lengths are actually correct. What does it look like? Is it right? Is it good? <laughs> I would say it's like maybe a few centimeters off of 12 inches, but it's close enough. Like, I don't think you're gonna notice a few centimeters of sandwich missing. I'll give you a pass, Subway. That's, that's fine. That's about 30.8 centimeters. 12.8. One, two, five, nine, eight inches. That one is six inches for sure. About 15 centimeters. 5.9055 inches. We can also get sub platters in the US. Ours are the exact same size, five 12 inch subs cut into 15 pieces. That is a lot of sandwich. It's very, very heavy. It's really heavy. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. We used to have sub platters and party subs, but show's over, folks. No more parties on this side of the Pacific. How's it look for you, Nico? We used to have party subs in the US, but Subway overhauled and streamlined its menu last year and now seems to have stopped offering them. Somebody check on Joe right now, because I know he is devastated. Moving on from subs, Drinks at a Chinese subway only come in one size, medium. That's just sad. Drinks at a US subway come in four sizes, small 21 ounces, medium 30 ounces, or large, which is 40 ounces. You may have noticed I said we have four drink sizes then only showed you three. That's because on Subway's catering menu in the US, you'll find this. Thank you to my beautiful assistant. It's a gallon of Hubert's lemonade. This supposedly serves eight people, which would be 16 fluid ounces each. Why is the recommended serving size for this lemonade smaller than the usual small size? That's very suspicious, Subway, but I do love this lemonade. So the large is supposed to be 40 ounces. We're gonna measure it to see if I'm being lied to, basically. The medium is meant to contain 473 milliliters of your drink. Let's see how much is actually in there. The Coke is really dark, so it's kind of hard for me to see the numbers, but it did go slightly above 32 ounces, which is significantly less than the 40 I was promised. And by the way, this was with no ice. It's meant to be 473 milliliters, but I just wanted to show you. Look how much is missing from the top. This here is about 425-ish. And if that's the case, it's missing over 50 milliliters of my soda. What gives, Subway? Here's everything that you'll find at Subway China that you won't find in the US. Here's everything that you'll find at a US Subway that you won't find in China. Obviously, Subway's menu is highly customizable. By combining different ingredients, Subway claims you can create over 2 million sandwiches. I don't know if I believe that, but I also don't have the time and or money to prove it, so let's just say it's true. Now, let's start with the foundation of any sandwich, the bread. Now, here in China, we have a couple of options, and by a couple, I mean two. 
that you don't have in the US. First is honey oat, and the second is Parmesan oregano. Now, it's on the menu, but of all of the stores that we ordered from, they all changed out the Parmesan oregano for just regular bread. So I don't know if they're offering it anymore or it's just still on the menu and they've forgotten to take it out. And in the US, we also have exclusive bread options like artisan flatbread and hearty multigrain. Once you've picked your bread, then it's time to choose your fillings. These are all of China's exclusive fillings that you won't find in the US. Starting with the black pepper thick cut steak. Oh, they weren't joking when they said thick cut. I oh, know. That's pretty decent. Here we have the Italian sausage and the chicken thigh chop. It's always the chicken thigh when it comes to chicken meat in a burger because Chinese people's thigh is the juicy part, not the breast. Next, we've got the egg mayo series. We love our egg mayo here. We've got salami egg mayo. I will need to ask for more salami next time. Four pieces just doesn't cut it when you've got a six inch sub. There's also the tuna egg mayo. I'm just gonna move swiftly on to the chicken teriyaki egg mayo. The uh, Chinese name <laughs> is quite descriptive. It's, it's the parent and child <laughs> sandwich because obviously chicken and egg. Put egg mayo in a bun, I'm happy. Here we've got the teriyaki chicken sandwich on honey oat bread. It's not got egg mayo in it. It's an inferior teriyaki chicken. The full house, which is tuna and chicken. Oh, it's a good thing none of you can smell my breath right now. Woo, woo. And here we've just got the bog standard ham. Save the best for last, our pulled pork limited edition sandwich with chia seeds in our bread. I'm quite pleased with the amount of meat that's found its way into the Subway subs. A little bit too sweet for my taste, but the pulled pork is there. We have a ton of subs in the US that aren't on the Chinese menu, so let's start with the classic sandwiches. So we've got the big hot pastrami, buffalo chicken, chicken and bacon ranch, cold cut combo, meatball marinara, oven roasted turkey and ham, steak and cheese, and the veggie patty. A fast food meatball sub sounds difficult, so I kind of want to try it and see how it tastes. This is a very heavy sandwich, I just want to say. It reminds me of school lunch. Like the smell of walking into a cafeteria when you're in like seventh grade, that's the vibe I'm getting from it. It's an okay meatball sub. So this is the chicken bacon ranch. I love chicken, I love bacon, and I love ranch. So hopefully I like this sandwich. There's just something about how the meat looks that's making my tummy hurt a little. I think it's just the paleness of the chicken and bread. I mean, it tastes better than it looks. Next, we have the no bready balls, starting with the black pepper steak Egg mayo, no bready bowl. This actually looks really good. They've got some kidney beans and some kind of coarse grain at the bottom as well. This actually looks decent. Oh yeah, now this tastes really good. Next we have the tuna egg mayo, no bready bowl. Oh, that does not look appetizing. The teriyaki chicken egg mayo, no bready bowl. Well, this is actually pretty decent. I think the uh, no bready bowls are probably actually order again. We also have the no bready bowls, which according to the menu are different than a salad, although they look exactly like a salad. A salad hidden under a mountain of deli meats. Here are all of the US exclusive bready bowls. The exclusive sandwiches don't stop there. In 2022, Subway in the US launched a range of menu items known as the Subway series. It's a list of 12 subs with predetermined ingredients designed to streamline the ordering process. So instead of going down the line and picking every individual thing that you want, you can just order these off a menu. While prepping for this shoot, we thought we had most of the subs on the Subway series menu, but since then, we have found out that they have dropped more sandwiches on this menu. The list just seems to keep growing and I don't know when they're gonna stop. 
So let's just focus on the subs that we have in front of us right now. I am very intrigued by the monster. That name sounds awful, and I'm hoping the sandwich will not be. I think it looks pretty good to me. Okay, so this is the monster, which is steak, bacon, and cheddar. That's delicious. It's good. The Bella Matza. I think that if I was any of the sandwiches on this list, I would want to be this one because why wouldn't I want to be the prettiest sandwich? This one definitely has like a more pleasing look to it. There's just like so much color in it. It looks like it has a lot of fresh ingredients in it. So in the Bella Matza, we have ham, capicola, and mozzarella. All delicious. Let's taste it. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like it. This feels very classic sandwich to me. Like if I was going to a sandwich shop, I'd probably order something like this. So this is the All American, which has turkey, ham, and bacon. She looks pretty good. She's not really giving. I think it's too much onions. I really, really want to taste the sliced avo mexicali. This one has rotisserie chicken, avocado, and pepper jack. That all sounds so good to me. Ooh, she's saucy. I feel like I haven't seen much sauce going on, so this is different. There's a lot of sauce in there. It's good, but I think the sandwich has just been sitting here for so long that the bread got soggy. So the bread on the bottom is like very, very soft but the actual taste of the sandwich is really, really good. It's honestly tasty. And Subway also offers wraps. So here we've got their black pepper steak wrap. Oh yeah, I think I prefer this version. Mm. Next we have the teriyaki chicken wrap. <laughs> Smells a bit wet. The turkey breast wrap. There's literally one slice of turkey breast. Here we have the Italian sausage wrap. The sausage has been butterflied. It's just one sausage. It's actually okay. After doing all of this Subway research, they actually added wraps onto our menu. Here are all of the wraps that you can get on the US menu. We also have a couple of exclusive meat options in the US, pepperoni and capicola. Here in China, we have some meaty toppings that you won't find in the US. For example, shrimp, which... <laughs> They literally gave us in a paper bag. Subway will ask you if you want cheese on your sub, and we definitely have a lot more cheese options than they have in China. Both countries offer American or shredded mozzarella, but the US also offers pepper jack, provolone, Swiss, or Monterey cheddar. China has one sandwich topping that you won't find in the US, and that's egg mayo. We love egg mayo here, I love egg mayo. It's basically just chunky mayo with eggs inside. And you'll find it in over half of our offerings here in China Subway. You have it in subs, you have it in wraps, and you have it in protein bowls as well. All of these are egg mayo, it's delicious. When it comes to vegetable toppings, both the US and China offer tomatoes, lettuce, cucumber, pickles, green pepper, black olives, red onions, and jalapenos. But the US also carries banana peppers my favorite, spinach and avocado. We also have some exclusive sauces like barbecue and Thousand Island dressing. And then there's also mayo, honey mustard, black pepper sauce, and olive oil. It's kind of shocking that we don't have Thousand Island dressing as an option. It's not like a super common sandwich spread, at least not in my house, but you do see it on Rubens and stuff like that. Exclusive sauces in the US include oil, red wine vinegar, creamy sriracha, buffalo sauce, MVP Parmesan vinaigrette, and roasted garlic aioli. They shove these words in everywhere. You guys are like trying to gaslight me into thinking that this is like an athlete's favorite food. And I know that's not true. It's crazy. It's crazy what's happening here. MVP Parmesan vinaigrette isn't real. You made that up. <laughs> Speaking of trying to make me think that athletes love Subway, here are the athlete collabs. Here we have the avocado spike bowl by Rob Gronkowski, the no look chicken by Patrick Mahomes, the front court feast by Charles Barkley, the meatball marksman by Steph Curry, and then there's the Danger Witch. Let's talk about the Danger Witch. Once upon a time, this was Russell Wilson's Subway collab sandwich. I don't know what happened, but at some point they removed his name from the sandwich. I think it has something to do with this weird commercial they did promoting the Danger Witch. You ever done anything dangerous? 
I obviously can't confirm anything, but I'm dying to try this. So let's see what the Danger Witch tastes like. They probably should get rid of it in general because it's also just not a very good sandwich. <laughs> it mostly just tastes like mustard. Now, it's tradition on Food Wars to combine all of one country's exclusives together. I present to you the US only sub. It has bacon, pepper jack cheese, banana peppers, spinach, buffalo sauce, all on jalapeno cheddar bread. I think our specific Subway didn't have jalapeno cheddar bread. This is their other cheesy bread, but it's the closest thing we got. It mostly just tastes like bacon, which I'm not upset about. This is the China only sub. Black pepper steak, egg mayo, Thousand Island dressing, on honey oat bread. Let's see if you guys in the States are missing out. You know, egg mayo goes on absolutely anything. And the thick cut steak gives it a nice oomph. Yeah, I'd order this again. Now let's see what side options we have in the US. Chips in general seem to be more of a US exclusive. Here are all of the flavors I was able to get my hands on at our location. So we have three Lay's flavors. There's sour cream and onion, classic, and barbecue. We also have two baked Lay's flavors, the original and barbecue. We have Doritos in both Cool Ranch and nacho cheese. Two flavors of Miss Vicky's chips. We have jalapeno and spicy dill pickle. And we have three flavors of sun chips. We have garden salsa, original, and harvest cheddar. You can also get a go-go squeeze applesauce as a kid's side. Subway also has sides, namely rattan pepper popcorn chicken. So I would assume that this is meant to be Sichuanese style chicken in that it should be spicy and also make your mouth pleasantly numb. Just the tiniest hint of chili heat. Here we've got some potato balls. They just taste like hash browns. Now this is pretty unique. This is called Western region style roast chicken wings. Usually when you say something is Western region flavored, they usually mean lamb or cumin. No, that's pretty good. No potato chips here, we're super healthy. But we do have cookies. Now, both the US and China each have an exclusive cookie. Here in China, we have the peach oolong. Hmm, that's yeah, quite pleasant. And Subway in the US offers the raspberry cheesecake cookie. I love Subway cookies. They are surprisingly soft and definitely the best cookie in fast food. In my opinion, I just think that they're so good. It's amazing, as I suspected. And finally, we have drinks. I am very happy that Subways in the US carry Coke products. You can get a classic Coca-Cola, a little DC, Sprite, Dasani, which, not my favorite, Vitamin Water Triple X, Gold Peak Sweet Tea, Simply Lemonade, Orange or Apple, Honest Kids Super Fruit Punch, or a Hubert's Lemonade. For drinks, China carries soy milk, and PepsiCo products. So you can get Pepsi, Pepsi Light, 7up, Tropicana. You can also get Aquafina water and it's soda water variety, but I guess only in select stores because when we ordered, we ended up getting Nongfu Spring, which is kind of like the Chinese version of Evian, I would say. Now, Subway entered China relatively late in 2005, and I believe nationwide, they've got about 700 stores. When they first opened, they had a lot more presence than they do now. They've kind of slid into obscurity and they're only really found in major cities like Beijing and Shanghai. Sandwiches aren't really hot in China. People don't like cold bread, cold sandwiches. Of course, you can ask for your sandwich to be heated up, but just the fact that it's kind of a, a cold sandwich as a default is a bit of a turn off. I think you can tell there hasn't been much localization on the Subway menu. I mean, there's the egg mayo, there's the Western region chicken, but cold custom-made sandwiches are not really the first thing you think of 
when you want food in China. You can probably guess that Subway is in a bit of a sad state here in China. In terms of competition, I mean, there's no need to even try to compete with KFC Mackey They're so far ahead, completely left Subway in the dust. Now, let's see which country is getting their subs for less. A foot-long Italian BMT from a Chinese subway costs 47 yuan, that's $6.79. At the time of recording, a foot-long Italian BMT from a US subway costs $9.99. I was so curious as to what BMT means, and it apparently stands for biggest, meatiest, tastiest. I don't know if I like that. That makes the US sandwich this much more expensive. Subway pricing has been a contentious subject in the US for a while now. You guys might remember the infamous $5 foot long promotion Subway operated for a really long time. It was pulled after franchisees said it was costing them too much money. Subway has repeatedly attempted to bring it back, but it's been quickly killed every single time. I have a feeling that US Subway will be more unhealthy than China's Subway, so let's compare a classic turkey sub. A six inch oven roasted turkey sub in the US is 270 calories. Now, Subway China hasn't released its nutritional information, but based on independent third party research, I can tell you that a six inch oven roasted turkey sub here in China is 252 calories, or 270, depending on who you talk to. The most calorific sandwich you can get is the chicken and bacon ranch, which clocks in at 570 calories. I want to guess the most caloric sandwich in Subway China. I think it has to be the black pepper thick cut steak. Am I right? Close! A six inch black pepper thick cut is 415 calories, but our heaviest hitter is in fact the six inch tuna sandwich clocking in at 450 calories. Not only is it not tasty, it's also incredibly calorific. Is it in my food or not? Is it in my food or not? Is it like touching the food? <laughs> is it in the gloves? Is it in the hats? Is it in this little crown that I've been wearing all day? I'm so stressed out. 